visit HastingsNebraska.com. It's time. It's time. It's time. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Blast off. It's time for Hastings Sodbuster Baseball. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner will be going. This is the payoff pitch. Let's see if Shea can get out of the inning here. The pick and deliver. Swung on him, missed it, got him. 12 strikeouts for Shea Shanneman. That one hits to left field. Making the left fielder go back. Keep going back, and that thing is going to be gone. It's out of here. Holy moly, Cole Evans. 370 feet. Cole Evans got a hold of that thing. Wow. That one hit to short. Cervantes to second. Back to first. And they get him. Nicely turned double play there. The old 6-4-3. And there's two down. Third double play tonight turned by the Busters. Sodbuster baseball is on the air. All right, everybody, welcome to Ryder Park for your Hastings Sodbuster baseball game. Josh Salmon along with you. Steve Tyne will join me later as we're in Grand Island, Nebraska. A special night for baseball here at a Legion slash high school field. College baseball being played. Talking to some of the players ahead of time. We'll get to some of the guys who played a lot of Legion and high school baseball here. Ryan Melvin and Carson Cahoy and get their thoughts about playing here today. We'll also try to catch up with Ryan Sanders a little bit later as well. So let's talk a little bit about Ryder Park. If you don't know, Grand Allen uh, was a charter member in the Nebraska State Le League in 1910. Ballpark for that team was the Delwood Park. Delwood Park started as Hands Park in the late 1800s. It was bounded uh, Charles on South and Koenig on the north between the South Locust and South Oak in the uh, 1890s. The common moniker for the park was Peace Pipe which is Pukwana Park. By 1910, the park was named Delwood Park, and the grandstands were on the east end of the park. In 1928, version of Nebraska State League had Grand Island playing on the diamond in Ryder Park. This ball diamond lasted shortly after World War II. The 1956 version of the NSL saw the Grand Island team playing at the municipal field. Uh, the current Grand Island ballpark is in Ryder Park. There's a large hill in the park called Tornado Hill by the locals. It's from the devastating tornadoes in the 1980 tornadoes. So, very cool. Actually, 81, I think, tornadoes said, but So, that's a little bit of history of Ryder Park. I remember playing here in Legion myself. I didn't play for the, any of the Grand Island teams, but we played against them. And so, a couple games back in the day that I played out in the right field here. And <laughs> it's funny what Carson had to say about the uh, the size of this field compared to he just played here about a year ago. He just graduated high school in 2020. So we'll get to that interview here in a little bit. Sioux Falls Sunfish are here. They're wearing uh, different jerseys yet again today. Lots of different jerseys for them. This, uh, the multicolored ones. I believe it's gray. Gray with, uh, they kind of have their orange sleeves and their teal sleeve on the right sleeve. The orange on the left with white pants this time. And the uh, black socks with black hats and teal on the bills. Buster's in their greens with the white pants. So uh, if you're just listening, you have a chance to come on out and still enjoy the ball game. All right, nice shaded area here in the stands and nice press box. And the coolest part about the press box to me is there's a restroom up here right behind us. And that's I know too much information for you guys, but uh, I thought it was cool. These teams uh, met up earlier uh, earlier in the season back in June, June 25th, 26th, and 27th. Sodbusters took game one of those three, 7-3. to three, Then uh, Sunfish won 8-4. to four on the 26th and a 6 to 11 on Sunday, June 27th. 8 to nothing was the score yesterday with Sioux Falls winning that one. This is uh, game number two of the series. And then Busters go back home to, uh, well, this is technically not home, uh, back to Hastings just down the highway here, 281. <laughs> Tomorrow for Casper Horseheads. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Casper Horseheads back in town. We just saw them the other day, and uh, they're taking on the Moo. Tonight, they'll be back over the weekend. Then the Busters are off for three with the All-Star game being on the 19th. Trevor Matson will be heading down there, and Cole Dawson will be heading to Casper, Wyoming for the All-Star game. And then uh, the Sioux Falls will come back into town, the last homestand of the season, which is not too far away. The last homestand of the season is uh, July 30th, 31st, and 1st of August. So after this weekend... After Sunday's game with Casper Horseheads, there's only six home games left at Duncan Field. 
pretty crazy, huh? Season's gone really fast. After the three-day uh, off on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Busters hit the road to Sioux Falls, so they'll see these guys again at their park on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Then Fremont for three uh, at Hastings, one at Fremont, and then Sioux Falls back to Duncan Field Aust off August 2nd, and then Wheat City Whiskey Jacks come in for three August 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and Busters wrap up the regular season against Pier Trappers who they're uh, ranked really close to right now. Speaking of those rankings, let's look at the second half. Fremont is uh, leading here in the second half only by one game over the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Fremont is 10-3. and three. Sioux Falls is 9-4. and four. Western Nebraska Pioneers are two games back of Fremont, one of Sioux Falls. They're 7-4. and four. Spearfish is 7-6, and six, three games back. Hastings, six and a half games back. And Pier Trappers are seven games back. Hastings and Pierre are the only two teams not over 500 in the division. Look overall, though, Western Nebraska is leading the le uh, leading the division. 30 and 12 is their record. Fremont second, 30 and 14, one game back. Spearfish, Sasquatch are third at the 28 and 15, two and a half games back. Sioux Falls Sunfish are fourth, 23 and 21, eight games back. Pierre Trappers are 12 and 30, 18 games back. And Sodbusters are 12 and 32 with 19 games back. So we'll take a quick break and come back and talk some more about Ryder Park from some of the players who played a lot of games here. This is Sodbuster Baseball. Nebraska Land Distributing is a proud sponsor of the Hastings Sodbusters. When you come to the ballpark, get a refreshing Coors Light, courtesy of Nebraska Land Distributing. Nebraska Land Distributing also features Line and Kugels, the ultimate summer drink, cold and refreshing, and sold at Duncan Field. Another Nebraska land distributing option when you come to the ballpark is light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Nebraska land distributing, proud sponsor of the beer batter at all Hastings Sodbuster home games. Adams County Visitors Bureau is the perfect place to start your Hastings experience. A place where you'll meet artists, shopkeepers, and storytellers while you stroll through downtown shops, beautiful parks, and historic housing districts. Whether you're a traveler, meeting planner, or a new resident, the Adams County Visitors Bureau is excited to help you find what you're looking for, from places to eat, things to do and see, to places to stay. Ask the Adams County Visitors Bureau. Get details at visithastingsnebraska.com. Experience Hastings with the Adams County Visitors Bureau. It's hot. Can we get some popsicles? A lot of popsicles. Okay, sure. Let's go to Sam's Club. We can get some popsicles there, plus check out the pools on sale. Didn't Dad want to barbecue tonight? With all those popsicles, we should get some paper towels, too. Good idea, Mom. I'll grab some chips. Sam's Club has something for every season. Sam's Club, a proud sponsor of Hastings Sodbuster Baseball. Stop by before or after the game. For the best in promotional videos, custom designs, photography, websites, and more, it's Provident Promotions. You've got the business. Now make it stand out with Provident Promotions. Provident Promotions can help you design your logo, website, custom make your promotional video, and shoot just the right photo for your company or business needs to be seen everywhere. And they even offer email marketing services and social media management. Let them help you from start to finish. 111 North Burlington Avenue, Suite 110 in Hastings. A proud sponsor of Sodbuster Baseball. My husband and I love to live in Nebraska. It's the good life. We always vacation here. Love those Nebraska State Parks. We love to eat here. Where are you going to get a better steak? And we love to play here, especially Nebraska Pick 5 from the Nebraska Lottery. It has a $50,000 starting jackpot, drawing seven days a week, and all the proceeds go back to our state. Hey, honey, this weekend, let's buy some Nebraska Pick 5 tickets, go to a state park, and grill some steaks. Like our first date. <laughs> I'm no amateur. Top prize odds, one in 501,000. All right, welcome back up to Ryder Park in Grand Island, Nebraska. I almost called it Duncan Field, just because you get in the habit of saying that. Yes, we're in Grand Island, Nebraska. Ryder Park, come on out if you're uh, watching and you're in the vicinity. Eight bucks to get in. And the fun thing we're going to do tonight is root beer batter. Because you normally have beer batters at the game. We're going to root beer batter. There's no discount. It's just a fun thing to do. It's just fun to say the root beer batter. All right. There are concessions, a uh, good selection of s concessions. So they're not as big as, as they have at the Hastings, but a good selection. There's no alcohol here on the premise, but plenty of uh, soda and water, and uh, there's burgers and stuff like that over there as well, hot dogs. And so should be plenty uh, to, to fill your tummy and uh, get some good baseball in as well. I had a chance to visit with a couple of the uh, Sodbusters who played some Legion baseball here and played uh, quite a bit of Legion baseball here. I'm talking about Carson Cahoy and Ryan Melvin as those guys played are from Grand Island and 
played a lot of baseball here at Ryder Park. I, th I played some games. I'm trying to think when that was. I think 1995, 96. So it's been a while uh, for me, but not so long for those guys. Get the interviews going here in uh, just a second. Carson uh, had <laughs> he had a good some good memories here. He had a really funny one against one of his teammates. So let's uh, let's get to that interview. And hold on a second here. My recorder is not going to work with my player, so we'll try this again. Let's do this a uh, different way here. So, sorry about the technical issue. Let's do it this way. So, high school and Legion ball? Yeah, well, I didn't play high school ball. I, okay. I ran track. Oh, that's uh, right. Legion ball, yeah. All of that. So, yep. it feels pretty good to be back. It's kind of cool. Yeah, big summertime thing. Always nice to be back at Ryder Park. It's always fun. Now, you graduated 2020, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So, it hasn't been too long. Field. Does it feel smaller to you, the field? <sighs> when you play at Duncan enough, <laughs> every, every field sm feels smaller, especially Ryder Park. So, yeah. Right. Wind blowing out a little bit. Uh, and you guys think you'll need the wind tonight? Um, you know, when you have some guys like we have on the team, you know, playing at Duncan, we could have a couple balls deep enough to, to get out on wind blown in on Duncan, so I'm sure some guys will find a way to have one out. But any special memories here from any games in your high school days that make you dig back a little ways? Well, I mean, taking uh, former teammate or uh, our teammate Jake Schroeder over the, over the scoreboard was always a good one. That's a fun one. <laughs> well, do you remember what year that was? Uh, that was my senior year. Okay, cool. <laughs> but that, we always, I give him a hard time about that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, there's just a lot of good memories. Obviously, I mean, I met a lot of great people here, and it's always a fun place to be. Always a good place. You know, I grew up watching baseball games here, watching my brother's play here, so. It'd be fun to have some Grand Allen fans here today watching. And, and they come to Hastings, too, but uh, be the hometown crowd, and you're coming with the hometown boys, you and, uh, and Ryan uh, Melvin. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there will be. Some of my friends are definitely coming out oh, yeah, and watch, watch play. Oh, yeah, but, <laughs> Definitely to come watch us play, but uh, I'm excited. All right. Thanks, man. All right, so that was Carson Cahoy. Let's hear from Ryan Melvin as well. Here with the Ryan Melvin. He spent uh, several years playing on this field as well. Uh, Grand uh, Grand Island Senior High. He played baseball for. Obviously went to Northwest. Talk about uh, any memories you have here at Ryder Park. Um, yeah, there's a lot of memories here. Uh, played a lot of baseball here. Um, you think it was like four years you played here? Or no. Did you do high I school did. and Legion? Or? Yeah, I did high school and Legion, but I didn't come to Grand Island until my sophomore year. So okay. it was three oh. years of baseball here. Does the field feel smaller to you now? Um, it kind of does. The main thing that's a little bit smaller is the mound. I remember it being a little bit higher than it is, but uh, <laughs> I could just see a change of the time. No, it, it's about what I remember it being. Yeah? Uh, wind blowing out a little bit tonight. Do you think the guys will uh, need that when they're batting? Um, smaller field, so. Yeah, it's a smaller field. It'll, it'll be interesting. It um, depends on how, how pitchers pitch. And I mean, we have to this small field. Every hitter is going to be trying to hit it out of here. So uh, it could be super exciting or it could be a whole bunch of pop-outs. We'll, we'll see. You got any family coming today? Yeah, um, my, both my, uh, my mom and dad are coming and my brother's in town. So they'll be here as well. Awesome. Very good. Thanks. All right, so there you go. Ryan Melvin and Carson Gahoy. They both played Legion Baseball here, very familiar with Ryder Park. So uh, the m dimensions we have for Ryder Park, much different than Duncan Field. 317 down the lines, 315 to power alleys, and 380 to center field. So uh, chance of a couple home runs today? I would say so. Giant scoreboard in left field is red. All right, so uh, very, very cool, very easy to read for a broadcaster, myself, and... Uh, always fun. I remember the scoreboard. That's been out there for a long time. I think they've redone it over the years. But I remember a big red one there when I played Legion Ball years ago. And we traveled from Aurora, Nebraska, down here to play against uh, Grand Island. And I don't remember if we won the game or not. But I just remember that I started in right field. And so there we go. All right. We'll take a break. Come back. Look at your starting lineups here at Ryder Park. This is Sodbuster Baseball. So stick around. We'll be right back. batteries and oil changes, and even shocks and struts? Graham Tire and Hastings has the quality products and great service you have come to expect from the Graham name. Rick and his crew will get you fixed up and right back on the road safely. And you can trust that the job was done right. That's peace of mind. Graham Tire and Hastings, West 2nd Street, open 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. A proud sponsor of Sodbuster Baseball. Hey, you. 
your ad here. It's Josh Salmon of Salmon Says Media. Imagine turning on the radio or TV and hearing or seeing your business being advertised. Salmon Says Media offers voiceovers, full audio production, on-hold messaging for your phone, and more. Nearly two decades of experience. Salmon Says Media also offers radio imaging and podcast production. See us on Facebook. Salmon Says Media, the official media partner of the Hastings Sodbusters. Five Points Bank of Hastings, safe, strong, and growing. Back in September of 2000, we opened for business at 4th and St. Joe with a staff of five. Now we have three banking locations, over 45 employees, and have grown to become the largest locally owned bank in Hastings. Since our opening, we've listened to you and responded by providing high quality customer service, new banking technology, and provided support to many community organizations. We appreciate your support and look forward to continuing as the better bank in Hastings. Time out. Time out. Smith, we only need one more out. Do you think you have enough energy? <laughs> I'm exhausted and it's hot out here. I'm thinking about enjoying that nice, cool air conditioning I have at home. Oh, yeah, you've talked about Rudd's Heating and AC, the number one source for residential and commercial HVAC services in Nebraska for over 45 years. Yeah, yeah, now, I have enough for one more batter, Coach. Smith, go finish this thing so we can all go home and cool off. Visit RuddsHeatingAndAir.com. Have you heard the latest in Sodbusters news? Hey, this is Josh Salmon, voice of Hastings Sodbusters Baseball, inviting you to check out the Sodcast, the official Sodbusters podcast. Each episode gets you up to date on team info, the latest news, player and coaches interviews, and more. Join Brian Frew and myself for the Sodcast all through the baseball season. The Sodcast is available for listening on Spotify for free. Hastings Sodbusters Baseball Insides, Inside Duncan Field, with me, Josh Salmon, and co-owner Brian Frew. The Sodcast. Listen today. Nebraska Land Distributing is a proud sponsor of the Hastings Sodbusters. When you come to the ballpark, get a refreshing Coors Light, courtesy of Nebraska Land Distributing. Nebraska Land Distributing also features Line and Googles, the ultimate summer drink, cold and refreshing, and sold at Duncan Field. Another Nebraska Land Distributing option when you come to the ballpark is Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Nebraska Land Distributing, proud sponsor of the Beer Batter at all Hastings Sodbuster home games. That is the home games at Hastings at Duncan Field. Not here at Ryder Park because there's no alcohol here today. Just root beer. You can pretend if you want, right? Nothing wrong with that. Josh Salmon back with you. Steve Stein will join me here a little bit later, hopefully, on the uh, the game. He's doing the PA right now for the broadcast or for the uh, Ryder Park here. And Steve's got a lot of memories here, too. Maybe he'll share some of those with us a little later. He's called a lot of baseball games at Ryder Park. Now, I'm not saying that he's old. I'm just saying that he's called a lot of games here. All right, series, help up. I'm digging myself a hole. That's what I'm doing. Take a look at your uh, starting lineup here for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Sioux Falls, uh, as I mentioned, their record uh, currently overall is 28-15, uh, th and 15, two and a half games out of first place. In the second half, they've been playing really well. They're 9-4, and 6-4 four, and four in their last 10 games with a one-game winning streak, winning over Hastings yesterday, 8 to nothing. Benito Garcia, the shortstop, will lead things off. It'll be... Uh, Mitchell Stroh is the third baseman batting second. Jonathan Brandon is at second base batting third. Will Olson, the catcher, doing the uh, DHing tonight. He is batting fourth. Kenneth Dudka, the winner in yesterday's game, is the pitcher. He is in center field today batting fifth. Gannon Thompson is moved over to right field tonight. He's batting sixth. Jesus Licone is in first base batting seventh. Carter Tibbetts is the catcher tonight batting eighth. And uh, Declan Beers is in left field batting ninth with the pitcher of Dane Frazier. So it's Garcia, Stroh, Brandon, Olsen, Dudka, Thompson, Lee Cohn, Tibbetts, and Beers with Frazier on the hill. For your Hastings Sidebusters, Chandler Wagner sends out this lineup. Logan John still leading things off. He will be in center field. By the way, he does look baby-faced. We talked about that yesterday's game. I met him down there at the concession stand a little while ago. <laughs> Turn around, I'm like, hey, this kid's got a jersey. He must be a big fan. Oh, that's Logan. Cole Dawson's at shortstop tonight. He is batting second. Trevor Madsen, uh, I, I'm going to call that he's going to hit one out of here today, at least one. I'm calling it right now. He's batting third at first base. James Shimashita, the left-handed batter, is the DH tonight, batting fourth. JT Cafferty behind the plate. He's got some games here back in his day playing for Hastings. Uh, he is uh, batting fifth. Ian Riley is in left field batting sixth. Jack Lombardi is moved over to second base tonight, batting seventh. Luke Solis is at third base, batting eighth. And Carson Gohoy, who we talked to in the pregame, Played a lot of games out in the outfield. He is in right field here at Ryder Park, batting ninth. So it's Johnstone, Dawson, Matson, Shimashita, 
Cafferty, Riley, Lombardi, Solis, and Cahoy with Trevor Dubray on the hill. Looking at some of the uh, Clark Division leaders, uh, in average, neither of these two teams have players that lead in average. But you look at home runs, Sunfish do, do have Olsen. Will Olsen, their catcher, has five home runs. He is in uh, fifth in the league. Well, he's tied for fifth in the league right now in the Clark Division. Look at RBIs. Trevor Matson on the list. He is fifth with 32. And pitching leaders, well, Garcia, who's their shortstop tonight for Sunfish, he is uh, has the most wins in the league with six. He also is uh, fourth place in strikeouts with 43. So glad we're not seeing him pitching tonight. He's at shortstop. And uh, Matt Stone from the Sunfish is in ERA with a 475. He is in fourth place in the league. Matt Stone leads the division uh, in strikeouts with 55. And Leif Holtine on the list here for ERA with his 443. But leading the way for the ERA is that Andrew Garcia again. So whew, glad we don't have to face him today. 248 ERA on that one, unless they bring him in out of the bullpen or something or warm him up from shortstop to pitcher. But see what happens is. So Busters will uh, play here, then back to Duncan Field tomorrow, Casper Horseheads for the weekend, and then they'll have three days off before hitting the road to Sioux Falls and playing at their house, at the Fish Bowl, if you will. Uh, the, they'll play them uh, for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Re home, return back to Duncan Field on Monday for three with Fremont before traveling to Fremont on the 29th and wrapping up the last homestand of the year on uh, July 30th, 31st, and 1st against the Sioux Falls Sunfish. They're off August 2nd, and then Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, they hit the road there, 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and then Pier Trappers, the 6th and 7th. So you still have, after this weekend, only six games to come out to Duncan Field. But if you include this weekend, you got plenty of time, right? Yeah. We're at Ryder Park today in Grand Island, and it's a fun time to be a game here. Uh, I've done my very first baseball game I ever broadcasted here years ago, Home Federal won the Legion teams, which is still the name of the team been that way for years. I was broadcasting with a former friend of mine, the late Brad Frostberg, who taught me a lot about broadcasting. Terrific guy. Uh, hopefully Brad's looking down on us. But anyways, we were doing a game, and we are I don't know, third inning or something like that. We're on a commercial break, and I was just kind of doing color comments here and there for him. And he looks at me, and he goes, all right, you're play-by-play -play for the next three innings. I'm your color guy. Uh, Ten seconds, something like that. And I'm like, what, what, what? <laughs> we come back on, and I did play-by-play uh, -play for my first time for three innings. And, you know, Brad didn't have to do that and didn't tell me he was going to do it, but uh, it was fun. And, you know, throw me right into the into the, the smoke, if you will. But good time. He would be laughing at that right now, I'm sure. So fun times. Uh, we're getting set to uh, have some baseball here about 10 minutes or so away from first pitch at Ryder Park. Again, the dimensions here at Ryder, uh, quite a bit different than Duncan. 317 down the lines, 350 to the power alleys, 380 to center field. And some of the players were saying the pitcher's mound looked like maybe it's a little uh, little flatter. Obviously not the artificial turf that they have at Duncan. This is real grass and real dirt. And they had to chalk the lines. And uh, Scott Galusha said the ground crew was out here last night working on things with the rains. And even oh, this morning, guys were out here getting the field looking good. And it's all dry and ready to go for some baseball. So we'll take a break, come back. We'll have first pitch here in just a little while. This is Sodbuster Baseball from Ryder Park in Grand Island, Nebraska. Adams County Visitors Bureau is the perfect place to start your Hastings experience, a place where you'll meet artists, shopkeepers, and storytellers while you stroll through downtown shops, beautiful parks, and historic housing districts. Whether you're a traveler, meeting planner, or a new resident, the Adams County Visitors Bureau is excited to help you find what you're looking for, from places to eat, things to do and see, to places to stay. Ask the Adams County Visitors Bureau. Get details at visithastingsnebraska.com. Experience Hastings with the Adams County Visitors Bureau. It's hot. Can we get some popsicles? A lot of popsicles. Okay, sure. Let's go to Sam's Club. We can get some popsicles there. Plus, check out the pools on sale. Didn't Dad want to barbecue tonight? With all those popsicles, we should get some paper towels, too. Good idea, Mom. I'll grab some chips. Sam's Club has something for every season. Sam's Club, a proud sponsor of Hastings Sodbuster Baseball. Stop by before or after the game. For the best in promotional videos, custom designs, photography, websites, and more, it's Provident Promotions. You've got the business. Now make it stand out with Provident Promotions. Provident Promotions can help you design your logo, website, custom make your promotional video, and shoot just the right photo for your company or business needs to be seen everywhere. And they even offer email marketing services and social media management. Let them help you from start to finish. 
111 North Burlington Avenue, Suite 110 in Hastings. A proud sponsor of Sodbuster Baseball. All right, welcome back to uh, Ryder Park. I almost said Duncan Field. I'm, I'm going to probably do that at some point tonight. Josh Salmon back with you, and I'm joined by co-manager Brian Fru. And, Brian, you have a lot of memories here uh, growing up in Grand Island playing on this field, and I imagine you coached here at some point too. Did you coach it uh, here at Ryder? Yeah, did you I coached just play? for uh, Home Federal a little bit. Uh, and obviously I played here for Home Federal, so a lot of baseball that I've played or coached here, and it, it kind of brings back memories. This is – not the first time I've been back. I've, I've come back to watch some games, but it's definitely nice to be back, and the uh, place looks great. Yeah, it's a, and they did a good job. But like Scott said, I think they were here last night or late working on it, and then it rained today, and so they're last night. But they're anyways working on it this morning and got to feel good and the real surface. Any any memories particular of any game that stands out to you here, either coaching or playing? You know, uh, there's some – we hosted the state tournament one year I was coaching, and that was a lot of fun. Played really good baseball, and uh, all we had to do, do was win one game against Creighton Prep. And, oh wow! You know, on the final day, and they they were able to beat us twice in a row. But um, yeah, so I think uh, it's been fun. So now what excited teams to see it happen today. What teams did you play for? Do you did you? I played for Home Federal. Home Federal, okay. And then also Five Points and Wells Fargo. Okay, awesome, very good. All right, Brian, thanks for coming on. Looks like yeah, you got you something going on there. So. Game yeah. time. So. All right. It'll be Game exciting. Time. Here we go. We get set for our first pitch here from Ryder Park. This is a fun one. Brian Fru joins me as I nice have him on. He's uh, sitting to my right over here. Steve Stein to my right doing the PA. We're all in one big booth. And as I said on the pregame, my favorite part of the whole, bo the whole booth is uh, the bathroom. We have our, uh, have our own bathroom here. So it doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're a broadcaster and you don't have much time, I can go 10 feet, and there's a, a potty right there. So that works okay. So we'll take a look at the lineups here again for Sunfish. It's going to be Benito Garcia at shortstop. Mitch Stroh uh, batting in the second position. He is the third baseman. Jonathan Brandon is at second base, batting third. Will Olson is at DH, batting cleanup. Kenneth Dedka, uh, Dudka, excuse me, the pitcher from last night's win. He is in center field, batting fifth. Carson Thompson in right field, batting sixth. Jesus Lee Cohn back over at first base, batting seventh. Carter Tibbetts is your catcher, batting eighth. And Declan Beers is in left field, batting ninth, with your pitcher as Dane Frazier. Peter Hastings Sidebusters leading things off. It's going to be Logan Johnston in center, Cole Dawson at short, Trevor Matson at first, James Shimashita as the DH. JT Caffrey is the catcher, batting fifth. Ian Riley batting sixth and left. Jack Lombardi is your second baseman, batting seventh. Luke Solis is at third base, batting uh, excuse me, batting seventh, batting eighth is Luke Solis, and batting ninth is Carson Cohoy in right field. He spent a lot of time in these outfields and knows the field very well, and it was fun to see the guys when I first got here and set up the gear a couple hours ago, uh, walking around just kind of checking out the field in the outfield and like, man, this thing is smaller than Duncan, you know, and there's just a bunch of trees in the outfield. If you can't see it, there's a play set dead center field because this is a park. It's a park with a ballpark, so a bunch of grass to the left over here behind the stands where people can come out and bring their dogs and walk around and play. And then to our right, there's other uh, Little League games going on uh, in the other side of the parking lot. And then houses stray out there as well for down West North Front Street is pretty much what left field faces. And uh, some, some of those people on West North Front Street might be getting some baseballs in their front yard tonight uh, if, if <laughs> things happen there. It's kind of interesting. Scott Galusha was talking about some of the players that wanted to. Everybody wanted to be in the lineup here because it's a smaller field and had a chance to hit home runs. But a lot of guys didn't want to pitch here because they didn't want to give up the home runs. I talked to Ryan Melvin two nights ago, and he wanted to pitch here. So uh, we'll see if he plays at some point. He has pitched a couple innings this week already. And I don't want to exhaust his arm too much, but I think it would be fun for him, and I think he would enjoy coming in. And he's got some family here today. So we may see him before it is all said and done. Make sure you're checking out the Sodcast, the official podcast of the Hastings Sodbusters. Brian uh, Frew and myself do that every week we try to do a epi new episode and find out the uh, insides of what's going on with the team and the league and anything else we want to share with you on the sodcast available on all major platforms so join us all right check it out it uh, doesn't cost anything to listen to it either cool somebody uh here to throw the first pitch and we still have jason fruit we brought him with us too yeah of course you got to have your your promotion guy on the field even on the visit uh, uh, on the road all right so Hastings is considered the home team they're in the third base dugouts. Sioux Falls Sunfish is in the right field dugout. So Tim Burnham throwing out the first pitch. Casey's dad, remember Casey last few years? He was a great attribute for us for the Sodbusters. Tim Burnham. And JT Cafferty catches him, knows Tim very well. JT does. A lot of history between those two guys, so. 
little bit different here with uh, with our internet. We had to use a hotspot off of uh, Scott Galusha's phone because there's no internet at this ballpark. So I won't be updating you on the Expedition League scores tonight just because I have limited data myself. Good crowd still filing in here. Some of the faithful from Hastings making the trip. A lot of Grand Allen fans who didn't know the game was happening until this week said, hey, let's come on out and check it out. So we're going to have our national anthem here momentarily as well. And let's do it to our national anthem. Getting set for some baseball from Ryder Park. Kylie Gingwish with the national anthem. You're going to be nice. Making history, folks. You're witnessing history for the first time. Sodbusters playing at Ryder Park. Trevor Dubray getting in the start tonight for the Busters. I don't know how they uh, chose who's going to pitch, but that's what he decided to get the start. Trevor has only been a Sodbuster for a short time. He appeared in three games. This is his first start. He's only gone uh, four and two-thirds innings. He has no record, 385 ERA, seven strikeouts, give up six hits in that time. Batting average against him is 316. All of his work has come out of the bullpen. All right. Good. Jason Brew uh, laying down the, uh, the law here, if you will, to the crowd. He wants people to be loud, wants them to be involved and have a good time. Chain link fence here I'm looking through, and I'm probably 50 feet behind the catcher, maybe 75. It's a lot of Legion games over the years, not just here, but in lots of parks. I've sat up behind, you know, right next to the fence. <laughs> sat on the one side of the dugout, so it doesn't really matter to me. As long as I can see the whole field, then uh, I'm good to go. And I'm still raised up a little bit higher. Not as high as I am at Duncan, but th this is good. You can still hear some comments and stuff. And got George behind the uh, plate. Anthony out on the field as your umpires. I hinder Trevor Dubray warming up there. Trevor, as I mentioned, only been with the team for three games. It was only appeared in three games from Western Nebraska Community College and Alliance Nebraska native. Six foot 183. JT Caffrey throws it down to second, and we're set for some baseball. Brings up Benito Garcia. Garcia was playing shortstop tonight. He's a terrific pitcher. Leads his league in a lot of categories. Batting 231 himself. 31 strikeouts, though, in 121 at-bats. Right-handed batter. So it'll be Garcia, Stroh, and Brandon. Here for the Sunfish. And we're all set. Pitch on the way from Dubray is inside for ball one. Keeping score the old-fashioned way here with my limited internet. So Garcia, West Aaron, uh, Arizona Western University, hails from Las Cruces, New Mexico. That one fouled off on the third base side. One and one. Giant red scoreboard in left field. Ball one strike. 
Mitch Stroh do up next. Still doing our sound effects, everything just like Duncan Field, but here, that one hits a short. Dawson uh, over to throw, and Matson stretching it out. But oh, they call him safe. They say his foot came off the bag. Wow, I don't know about that one. It was a high throw, and Trevor how about to jump out of his shoes or so, but came out of a, got the catch, but didn't make it. So infield single there for Garcia. Is it an error? Okay, they are going to rule it an error on the throw. So error there on Cole Dawson. Not a good way to start the game. Cole double clutched it. Should have been an easy throw. Garcia runs pretty well. He's got a lead off of first. Brings up Mitch Stroh. He shows the bunt. Dubray grabs it himself. He's going to have to hurry over to first. This time they get the out. And there's one down. Sacrifice bunt there for Stroh. So Jonathan Brandon comes up. He's at second base. So more of a third last night. Brandon Utility infielder. There's a lot of guys in this team that can play a lot of different positions. He's from uh, Louisiana. Goes to University of Louisiana Lafayette. He's a junior there, right-handed batter. Brandon batting 277 on the season. Garcia stands on second base. There is one out here in the top of the first from Ryder Park. Dubray's pitch. Low and outside for ball one. I'm going to broadcast a game here. I've shot many, many pictures here, but I haven't done a game here in a long time. Just underway from Ryder Park in Grand Island. Trevor Dubray checks his runner. That's Garcia. Comes set and pitches, and it's outside to Jonathan Brandon. Several Little League teams use this field. There's the USAFE Pharmacy team, the Tom Dinsdale, the Home Federal, and the Five Points Bank teams. Bray checks his runner and the pitch. Don't call the strike. Two balls and a strike. Trevor Dubray. Come set, and his pitch to Jonathan Brandon. Fouled off first base side into the parking lot. Watch out if you're coming in. There's some people walking over there. I think I parked far enough away. I can see my car from where I'm sitting. There's not really a safe spot at Ryder Park to park, but I think I'm pretty much out of the woods. It'd really hard be hard to foul, hit a foul ball where I'm at, but we'll see what happens. Everybody wants a souvenir, but not in the windshield. Here is the 2-2 from Dubray. One on, one out here at the top of the first. Breaking ball outside. Goes to three and two. Ginormous scoreboard out in left field. Gives the batter's number. Balls and strikes and outs. Nice, nice. I like the scoreboard here. Righty versus righty matchup. Dubray takes his time. Doesn't work very quickly, but that's fine. He's got all the time in the world. First thing, he fouled straight back. We'll do the 3-2 again. Just a little late on that one. Was Jonathan Brandon. Brandon has 94 bats in the season. Does only have only 12 RBIs. Struck out 31 times. His OPS is 875. Slugging percentage of 426. Had a hard time at third base last night, I remember, on some of his throws at second tonight. Speaking of second, Art Garcia's there. He goes. Swung on and missed. Throw it in the third, and the throw is high. It's going to be a strikeout, but a stolen base by Garcia. So it could have been a strike him out, throw him out, but there was a high throw from JT. I think he got out of the glove a little late. And Garcia had a pretty good jump. But first strikeout of the day there for Trevor Dubray. Will Olson. The catcher comes up. So they got the gray jerseys with the teal sleeves uh, on the right side, orange sleeve on the left with the orange numbers, the white pants, gray socks, black helmets today for Sioux Falls. Say Hastings Sodbusters in the green, the white lettering with the white pants, green socks, and the Oakland A looking hats. 2 and 0 here with the B on the front. Olsen is the DH caught in last night's game. He's given his knees a rest. Olsen 347 batting average. 
He was a tough out, only struck out 13 times this season in 75 at bats. Garcia stands on third. That one down the third baseline. That's going to be a fair ball into left field. Garcia will score. Olsen rounding first, throw coming into second. He will be into second base, sliding for the double and the RBI. one nothing Sioux Falls. I think it was fair by eight inches or so down the third base line. Solis tried for it but couldn't come up with it. Would have been a tough play for anybody. So one run in on one hit here. And Kenneth Dudka comes up. We saw Dudka on the hill last night. Got the win. Went uh, seven innings, I believe, last night. They kill left-handed batter, just like a left-handed thrower. That one inside, and ball one here to Kenneth Dutka. Dutka, 309 batting, batting average. 27 games he's played this year. One ball, one strike. Kenneth Dudka. Olsen stands on second. It's one nothing Sunfish here in the top of the first. Trevor Dubray, righty versus lefty Dudka. Pitch on the way. That one looped into left field, but it's right at the left fielder. Making the catch out there is Ian Riley, and they leave one on base. One hit, one left on, and one run in. It's one nothing Sunfish. Bottom of the first coming up. This is Sodbuster Baseball from Ryder Park. So we'll, we'll be right back after these words. Nebraska Land Distributing is a proud sponsor of the Hastings Sodbusters. When you come to the ballpark, get a refreshing Coors Light, courtesy of Nebraska Land Distributing. Nebraska Land Distributing also features Line and Googles, the ultimate summer drink, cold and refreshing, and sold at Duncan Field. Another Nebraska Land Distributing option when you come to the ballpark is light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Nebraska Land Distributing, proud sponsor of the beer batter at all Hastings Sodbuster home games. Adams County Visitors Bureau is the perfect place to start your Hastings experience, a place where you'll meet a... Nebraska Land Distributing is a proud sponsor of the Hastings Sodbusters. When you come to the ballpark, get a refreshing Coors Light, courtesy of Nebraska Land Distributing. Nebraska Land Distributing also features Line and Kugels, the ultimate summer drink, cold and refreshing, and sold at Duncan Field. Another Nebraska Land Distributing option when you come to the ballpark is light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Nebraska Land Distributing, proud sponsor of the beer batter at all Hastings Sodbuster home games. All right, welcome back to Ryder Park. As Sioux Falls able to put up a run on one hit, but they leave one on base. And a good time here in Grand Island, Nebraska. Fun to play Ryder Park. For the Busters of uh, this inning here in the bottom of the first, it will be John Stone, Dawson, and Matson. Josh Salmon with you from Ryder Park. Overcast day. It's been overcast all day in Grand Island. Some clouds, but rain's supposed to be holding off. It looks like this weekend there's going to be quite a bit of rain in the area. So out there on the hill is Dane Frazier. We saw him play in the infield yesterday. Frazier has uh, only pitched in three games. No starts. This is his first one. He's three and two-thirds innings. Is uh, no record, 245 ERA. Batting average against him is 231. He struck out seven batters in those 3.2 innings. So not a whole lot of pitching experience this season for Dane Frazier, and hopefully the Busters can take advantage of that. So I'm in the infield yesterday. So here comes Logan Johnstone. Logan getting a good reception here in Ryder Park. Attended batting, John Stone, right-handed throwing Frazier. Pitch on the way, and that one misses upstairs for ball one. John Stone, Dawson, Matson, do up here. So pitch outside, two balls and no strikes. Here is the 2-0 coming up, and that went in for a strike. Logan Johnstone, 2-1 and one count here to him. Nice to get him on if he can. He's got some good wheels out there. Pitch inside, going to be playing for Gonzaga next season. 
John Stone, very young looking young man, and he is. He's just out of high school, but he looks even younger than that. 5'11", 175 freshman from Los Gatos, California. I haven't met him yet. I need to go down and meet him. The 3-1 on the way. John Stone smacks that one into left field in that 5-5 hole, and the leadoff hitter's on here for the Busters in the bottom of the first. Crowd gets excited. Nice to see some, some of the old faces, the regular faces, I should say, some of the new faces out here as well at Ryder Park, and a good time for everybody. Brings up Cole Dawson, the shortstop. It's uh, 317 down the lines, 350 to the power alley. He's 380 to center field, much smaller than Duncan Field. And the mound, uh, some of the pitchers say, is a little squared off on the top. We'll see what that means. John Stone, the good lead at first, being held on by Lee Cohn. He's not going. Pitch outside. It's ball one. Cole getting the sign from Chandler Wagner over at third. One run in for Sunfish in the top of the first. One run on one hit, no errors for them. No runs on one hit and one error. Uh, no errors, excuse me, for them. One error for us, for Hastings. That one called a strike. One ball, one strike to Cole Dawson. Trevor Matson to up next. I, I predicted that Trevor will hit a home run at some point in this game on this field. So it's fun to hear the guys. The dugouts here are wide open, I mean, as far as to the field. There's nothing protecting them from the field. There's no fence, no railing, no steps, no nothing here. So you really got to be paying attention on foul balls. Now he gets away from the catcher, so John's still able to advance to second. Wild pitch here from Dane Frazier. So Johnstone stands in scoring position now at second base. Two balls and a strike to Cole Dawson. No outs here, bottom one, one nothing. Sunfish. Taking a long look is Frazier, standing on the third base side of the rubber against the right-handed Cole Dawson. And the pitch comes in, stays upstairs. It's 3-1 and one now. So he fell behind 3-1 and one to John Stone, and he got a single. It's 3-1 and one now to Cole Dawson. Play set out in center field right Directly out from where I'm sitting, way out there. Pitch on the way here from Frazier's outside. And it's a walk. First walk of the game is Cole Dawson. Brings up Trevor Matson. Hey, now they're yelling Trevor since Omar's not here. So that's a fun one, right? Yeah, why not? Got to have a good time at the ballpark. Trevor Matson comes up, 315 batting average on him. He does have three home runs on the season. Time to pad your stats here at Ryder Park. Johnstone stands on second base. Cole Dawson on first. Here is the pitch, and that one fouled off. James Shimashita do up next. Then you go to J.T. Cafferty. Ian Riley also after that. Lombardi. The 0 1 coming up here to Matson. 2 on for the Busters. They try 1 0. No outs. Ooh, that one beans him on the upper part of the shoulder. And Matson, that one's going to sting. That hit, uh, not, I don't think that was mostly meat either. And obviously, he didn't do it on purpose. Catcher comes out and talks to him. And he takes off his hat and he feels really bad about it. But base is loaded now, nonetheless. So Shimashita up here, chance for some RBIs for James. So bases loaded, no outs. Good position here for Hastings, and Frazier wants a new sign from his catcher. That's Tibbetts as the catcher tonight. Pitch inside for ball one. John Stone singled, Dawson walked. Trevor Matson was hit by a pitch. That's where they are on the bases, third to first respectively. 1-0 count here to James Shimashita. Jimmy uh, Shimashita is the DH. Pitch on the way, and then fell off third base side into the public park area, which is just a big grassy field over there, and then there's some picnic tables and a huge grassy area. Ryder Park, if you go a little farther that way to the left, that is the Tornado Hill from the Tornadoes, 41 years ago, 1980 Tornadoes, June 4th. 
Um, six people died from those tornadoes, but most of the debris, that they, or some of the debris, is in that hill, and people slid down it stuff in the wintertime. The grass on it now. Now he gets away from the catcher. Johnstone coming in. He will score. Pass ball. Run score. They're all tied up. 1-1. One, one. Sioux Falls having a tough first inning here. Two balls, one strike. No outs. Runners on second and third. Matson stands on second. Cole Dawson stands on third. James Shimashita still with some chance of RBIs. 2-1 count to him. Ready pitcher, lefty batter. Here's the pitch from Frazier. And that one hit into center field. And it's going to fall right in the glove. Should be deep enough for Dawson to tag and score. And it is 2-1. to one. The guy's in green. So sacrifice fly. RBI there for James Shimashita. Cole Dawson scores. Brings up G.A.T. Cafferty. Cafferty catching for the Busters. Nick Carlson also catches. Those guys rotate. Runner stands on second. Two to one here. Still only the one out. Swung on and missed on that one. Had a tough time with the breaking ball. Matson stands on second. He was hit by a pitch, advanced over on the pass ball, wasn't able to tag up on the fly out to center. He's dancing at second base, and that's pretty much the only way to describe it. Similar pitch. That one gets away from the catcher. Matson trying for third, and it's a high throw. He makes it in there safely. He took off kind of late, and the ball really didn't get that far away from the catcher, Tibbetts. If the throw would have been a little, a little lower, they might have had him. But a good slide there for the big guy, Trevor Matson, And now moving into scoring position. Tippett's having a hard time behind the plate here in the first inning. Two to one. Sodbusters lead here. Bottom one. There's only one out. Runner on third. The 0-2 count to J.T. Cafferty. He's played some games here in his high school career. That one hit too short. Nope. Third baseman scoops it up. Throws it across the diamond. It's in the dirt. Lee Cone scoops it up. Brought his shovel. And it's an RBI. But... Gets the out anyway, so RBI there for Cafferty. And Trevor Matson scores. It's 3-1 to one, Hastings. Five. five. Yeah, five, three. Five, three on the put out. Ian Riley comes up. Ewan's really, uh, he had three hits in yesterday's game. Really been getting his average up a lot higher. Batting uh, 220 now. On base percentage, though, is 679. Three runs in here for the Busters in the first. You think they like playing a rider? I think so. And the good, the good part about this, too, is a shorter drive home for me tonight. <laughs> I only got a half-hour drive tonight. Cuts my distance in half. Pitch on the way here from Frazier. And that one inside. So one ball, one strike. Three runs in for the Busters on only one hit. So that walk and hit batsman came back to bite Frazier here in the first. The 1-1 one -one offering coming up to Ian Riley. That one high goes to 2-1. and one. If Ian should reach, Jack Lombardi. We have a uh, Jason Frew sighting in front of the window here. He can't do that at Duncan. Unless he's eight feet tall. That one way inside and goes to three and one now. Jason Frew played a lot of baseball games here. He even coached here at Ryder Park. So a lot of nostalgia for him growing up in Grand Island with brother Brian. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Here's the pitch. And outside taking all the way with Ian Riley. And the struggles continue here for Dane Frazier in the first. Second walk given up by Frazier. Three runs in on one hit for Hastings here at the bottom of the first, and it does bring up Jack Lombardi. First game of the Busters yesterday. No batting average for him and three at-bats. Looking for his first hit. In the one game, playing second base tonight. Utility infielder played third base last night. 
Says he will also play left field if we need him to. Goes to University of Omaha. From the Illinois area, the Illinois, uh, Chicago, Illinois area. Riley's the good lead off of first. He is quick. And he... Ooh, and a buck. Riley, Riley took off like he was going to steal and then slammed on the emergency brake. And good thing he did. And it confused Frazier. He got the box. So he will advance. So things are really getting worse here for Dane Frazier. He's got a buck, wild pitch, some pass balls. He's beaten the batter. Walked two guys, give up a hit. He trails three to one here. Runner scoring position once again. Let's see if Lombardi can get him in here. That one fell off into the parking lot to our right side. So plenty of youngsters here to chase him at Ryder Park as well. Righty versus righty. One on three in for the Busters here in the bottom of the first. They lead three to one. The no balls, one strike pitch coming up. That one way upstairs. One ball, one strike, two outs. Ryder Park in Grand Island, Nebraska. West North Front Street just off of, off of Blaine. The old uh, Army Depot, ammunition depot is behind us. Some Little League fields off to the right as well. Two balls and a strike. There are some Little League games going on over there. And some play sets, but I don't see any kids found the play sets out in center field yet. That's why he's out there. Here is the 2-1 coming up. Smack to right field. Is that going to be a fair ball? And it is a fair ball. No. Oh, wow. They called it foul. and Lombardi was booking it around first. Whew, it looked like it was fair from here, but the umpire has a better vantage point than I do. Wasn't foul by much if it was. So 2-2 two and two is the count. Just a long strike. Riley goes back to second, and Lombardi, the big smile on his face, comes back up and gets his bat. It's handed to him by teammate Luke Solis. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Ian Riley stands on second base. Three to one, Hastings. Jack talking it over the umpire with a smile on his face. Is it was foul, really? He was booking. He would have easily had a double, possibly three on that thing. So we'll do it again. Two, two here. Two outs. Frazier trying to get out of this. Seventh batter of the inning for Hastings, leading three to one here in the first. Ian Riley danced around second, and again a balk by Frazier. And this time the umpire is going to tell him what he's doing wrong out there. So two box. Ian Riley. Got walked and then balked over to second, balked over to third. So we'll do the 2-2 again here. It must just be something subtle because I really don't notice the balk when he does it. Riley dancing around the line there, and that one inside. It goes to 3-2. Three, three balls, two strikes, two outs. Payoff pitch coming up here in a moment from Frazier. Buster's leading 3-1 to one in the bottom of the first with Ian Riley standing on 90 feet away. Pitch on the way here. They're setting him up in the outside corner. Let's see if that's where they go. They go way too far outside. And another walk, back-to-back -back walks. The third walk of the inning given up here by Dane Frazier. There is action already in the bullpen for Sioux Falls. I can see their bullpen really good from here. Hastings is a little different, a little harder to see with the concession stand in the way. It's kind of the opposite. It's bizarro bullpens, if you will. So Lee's comes up, eighth batter of the inning. Busters have three walks this inning. Three runs, one hit, three, uh, let's see, a hit batsman. The only outs are the sacrifice fly by James Shimashita and the ground out to second by J.T. Cafferty. So here's Solis. He start at third base tonight. Luke betting 204 in 54 at bats. And first pitch in there for a strike. Carson Cahoy, who knows this field very well, probably better than anybody on this field today, he is due up next if Solis can find a way to get on. The 0 1 coming up. That one popped up first base side and slicing out of play. Look out in the bullpen. Bullpen is uh, right behind the dugout. A lot of foul ground here. First base and third base side. 
0-2 oh, to Luke Solis. Johnstone singled. Dawson walked. Matson was hit by a pitch. Shimashita and Cafferty got out. Riley walked. And then Lombardi walked. Lombardi goes from first. It's fouled off, and he'll just go back. Nothing but calisthenics out there for Lombardi. I like the aggressiveness, though, on the base pass here this inning for the Busters. Ian Riley stands on third. He hasn't had to be aggressive. He took off on a fake steal, and then the guy balked. He balked again over to third. That's why he's there. Lombardi leading off at first, being held on. Doesn't go this time, and that pitch fouled off and into the crowd. Hey, there's a souvenir. One guy tipped it, and the other guy caught it. That's why you bring your, your mitt. You never know. You bring your mitt. He would have had that if he brought his mitt. All right, the Buster Bucks being handed out here, too, for some concessions. Limited concessions, but still good stuff. The 2 coming up once again. Luke Solis keeping this inning alive. That one sounded like a broken bat over to third. Ross of Diamond at first, and Lee Cohn does scoop it. Nice job there by the big man over at first on the ground. Down. They leave two on base. But they get to three runs on one hit and two left on. Busters lead it 3-1 to one at the end of the first inning. This is Sodbuster baseball from, uh, I almost said Duncan Field. I almost did, Nate. Let's uh, hear a word now from Sam's Club. It's hot. Can we get some popsicles? A lot of popsicles. Okay, sure. Let's go to Sam's Club. We can get some popsicles there, plus check out the pools on sale. Didn't Dad want to barbecue tonight? With all those popsicles, we should get some paper towels, too. Good idea, Mom. I'll grab some chips. Sam's Club has something for every season. Sam's Club, a proud sponsor of Hastings Sodbuster Baseball. Stop by before or after the game. For the best in promotional videos, custom designs, photography, websites, and more, it's Provident Promotions. You've got the business. Now make it stand out with Provident Promotions. Provident Promotions can help you design your logo, website, custom make your promotional video, and shoot just the right photo for your company or business needs to be seen everywhere. And they even offer email marketing services and social media management. Let them help you from start to finish. 111 North Burlington Avenue, Suite 110 in Hastings. A proud sponsor of Sodbuster Baseball. Hastings leads 3-1 to one here at Ryder Park in Grand Island, Nebraska. Josh Salmon along with you. It's a fun atmosphere here to play a game in Grand Island at Ryder. Got some memories here myself. As a little, as a, I remember playing a game here against, and I think it was Home Federal, Back in around 1995 time, I was in right field, but they had a DH for me because I wasn't a good hitter, which kind of made me mad because the guy was ran that hit for me was a really slow runner, and I was fast. So here is Thompson. Gannon Thompson comes up, the right fielder. This is the guy at six foot seven. He played center field last night. First pitch in there, a strike to Gannon Thompson. It'll be Thompson, Lee Cohn, and Tibbetts. Six, seven, eight hitters due up here in the top of the second. For Sunfish, that one down third base line and foul. They trail three to one. They're able to get one run on and one hit last inning. Busters had a really good bottom of the first. Trevor Dubray, a little bit of breathing room with a two-run lead. One run, one hit, no errors for Sioux Falls. Three runs, one hit, and one error for Hastings. Dubray, righty versus the righty. Thompson, that one popped up right field. Cahoy knows that right field better than anybody in this ballpark and makes the catch. Said it's fun for him. Said one of his uh, favorite memories was taking current Sodbuster teammate Jake Schroeder deep in Legion Ball his senior year of high school. So he says he, he ribs him about it every once in a while. Jesus Lee Cohn comes up, the big man. Lee Cohn did a good job, scooped a couple out last inning over first base. Guy's built like a linebacker, 326 batting average. He has no home runs, which really surprises me. The size he is, the big duty is. The 1 0 here is to Jesus Lee Cohn. Dubray's pitch in there for a strike, 1 and 1. Trevor did a good job out there on the hill. His first start as a side buster. Hasn't been on the team very long. His pitch on the way, and the breaking ball swinging and missing there is Lee Cohn. Looks like a curveball. Tibbetts do up next, the catcher. And Beers after that. That one goes back to the net. And again, we'll do the one and two. 
So if you're listening and not watching the game, it sounds the same as Duncan Field. We got the sound effects, we got Jason Fru, we got Steve on PA, I'm announcing Nate's over here running the cameras, but we're in Grand Island at Ryder Park. That one a foul ball off of his foot. That's gonna leave a mark. It's the left foot there. See so limping around. That's so one of their guys get hurt last night that way and had to be pulled out of the game. Um, last night's game, it was, I believe it was Forte. No, it was Hoffpower. Hoffpower hit one off his foot last night, late in the game. Here's the one-two again from Trevor Dubray. That one popped up, slicing out of play. JT Cafferty giving it reach and it just behind the stands. Almost landed in the metal bleachers to my right. Again, one, two here to Lee Cohn. Pitch from Trevor Dubray with his sleeves pulled up. He's in the dirt. And this time it's actually in the dirt when I say in the dirt. There's no turf. Legion baseball field is Ryder Park. Outfitters have to be out there going, hey, I don't have so much room out here. <laughs> it's a little smaller out there in the outfield. Three balls, two strikes. Battling back here is Lacone, Jesus Lacone. He was down on the count one and two, fouled off a couple, now got it to three and two. See if Dubray goes back to the curveball here. And it's a little too low in the dirt. So first walk him up there by Sodbuster pitching. And, Lee, and the first baseman's on for Sunfish. Two, Carter Tibbetts. Tibbetts, Tibbetts comes up. So, our root beer batter. There's no alcohol here at Ryder Park. Lacone leads off a first big lead for a big guy. Matson being hold, holding him on over there. Not going. Pitch in the in there for a strike. Carter Tibbetts. If him listed as an other player, so he's a universal guy, goes to the University of New Mexico. He's from Minnesota. It's Wayzata, Minnesota. Be exact. That one down third base line and fouled on the breaking ball. 0 oh 2 here to Carter Tibbetts. Tibbetts has played in uh, 22 games. For the Sunfish, 77 at bats. Does have three dingers. This is a much shorter field. Buster's playing deep in this short outfield. Here is the 0-2 coming up from Dubray. Runner on first, 3-1 Hastings, top two. Nice stop by Cafferty to keep it in front of him. Knocked it out to the grass. No chance for Lee Cohn to run on that one. It's a ball and two strikes. Sunfish put a one spot up in the top of the first. Buster's answered back with three in the bottom of the inning. We're on top of the second right now. Crowd getting into it here at Ryder Park. Fun atmosphere. This is good times. Here is the 1-2 from Trevor Dubray. That one hit to shortstop over Cole Dawson's head and falling into left field for a single. Just a little too high to catch that one. Carter Tippett's on. That is only the second hit given up by Trevor Dubray. So Declan Beers comes up to left fielder. Betting 305 on the season. Has 95 at bats in 25 games. Two runners on. You have Lecone standing on second and Tibbetts standing on first. Only one out here in the top of the second. Dubray pitches down, down the third baseline and foul. He's trying to take it that way. Left handed batter Tibbetts trying to. Inside out it down the third baseline where Luke Solis is. Solis at third, Cole Dawson at short. Uh, over at second you have Lombardi. That's in it at first, and JT Cafferty behind the dish. Your outfielder goes Riley, Johnstone, and Cahoy. That one way inside, and moving out of the way is Declan Beers. One ball, one strike. 
One out. Here is the 1-1 one -one with two runners on. Cabrera takes a while out there. That one hit dead center field. Johnstone on it. Lecone not able to tag up as Johnstone gets it in. And there's two down. So back to top of the order for the Sunfish. Benito Gar Garcia comes up. I mentioned Garcia as a shortstop. He's a leads in the league in some pitching stats. Leads the league. Uh, which, excuse me. He's second in wins with five. He leads the league in ERA with 2.48. And he's uh, fourth in strikeouts with 43. So we're not seeing him on the mound. We're seeing him at shortstop, which I'm fine with. Reached on an error to lead off the game. Back in the first. Two on here, two outs. Runners go. And that one way outside. No chance of throwing him out. A double steal. Lee Cohn steals third. Tibbet steals second. Sioux Falls team does like to run. They're stolen base happy. 157 on the season coming into this game. I'll be at 159 now. The pitch was a ball, obviously way outside to Benito Garcia. Here's Dupre's pitch in the outside corner, ball and a strike. So Gannon Thompson let off the inning. He flew out to right. Jesus Lecone walked. He stands on third base. Carter Tibbetts singled. He stands on second base. And Declan Beers flew out. That's your two outs. Debray looks over at Lacone, who's leading down the line there. The back to Debray. Trevor over to first and retires the side. They leave another two runners on base. They had 13 left on base in yesterday's game for Sioux Falls. Still 3-1, bottom of the second coming up. This is Sodbuster Baseball from Ryder Park in Grand Allen. We'll take a word now from the Nebraska Lottery. Nope, from Rutz, I'm sorry. Time out, time out. Smith, we only need one more out. Do you think you have enough energy? <laughs> I'm exhausted and it's hot out here. I'm thinking about enjoying that nice, cool air conditioning I have at home. Oh, yeah, you've talked about Rudd's Heating and AC, the number one source for residential and commercial HVAC services in Nebraska for over 45 years. Yeah, yeah, now, I have enough for one more batter, Coach. Smith, go finish this thing so we can all go home and cool off. Visit RuddsHeatingAndAir.com. My husband and I love to live in Nebraska. It's the good life. We always vacation here. Love those Nebraska state parks. We love to eat here. Where are you going to get a better steak? And we love to play here, especially Nebraska Pick 5 from the Nebraska Lottery. It has a $50,000 starting jackpot, drawing seven days a week, and all the proceeds go back to our state. Hey, honey, this weekend, let's buy some Nebraska Pick 5 tickets, go to a state park, and grill some steaks. Like our first date. <laughs> I'm no amateur. Top prize odds, one in 501,000. All right, welcome back to Ryder Park. As Sioux Falls had two, left two guys on base. They left one in the first inning. They still trail 3-1. to one. Josh Salmon with you here at Ryder Park. Busters will have uh, due up this inning. It'll be Cahoy, Johnstone, and Cole Dawson. Busters sent eight men to the plate in the first inning. They will get three runs on one hit. They had three guys walked and a hit batsman, a Wild pitch here, the pass ball there, E-I-E-I-O. Cahoy comes up, talk to him in the pregame. And one of his favorite memories was taking Jake Schroeder deep here in Legion Ball a couple years back. He's got a lot of memories here. He played four years of Legion ball. He play high school baseball because he ran. He did track. He was a pole vaulter. Check swing by Carson down to third base. Not the swing he wanted to get from the hometown crowd, and they do get him by about a step. And there's one down. Just a little dinker down third. Not a great swing. So Logan Johnston comes up. Let off hitter. Let off the second inning. Got things going for the Busters by singling. He has the lone hit for the Sod Busters. It's Busters with. One run on three, uh, excuse me, three runs on one hit. Buster's out hit. 
Sunfish last night, but did not score him. Eight to nothing. Sioux Falls won that game. Here is the pitch from Frazier in his second inning of work. Johnstone swinging first pitch too. That one to left field and making the catch in foul ground out there is Beers and uh, two pitches and two outs here in the second. So Cole Dawson comes up. He walked his first time up. Short pitch count here this inning so far for Frazier as he labored in the first. Good crowd here on hand at Ryder Park in Grand Allen. Fun to do this. From the Grand Allen fans, some of Hastings faithful made their way down here as well. Here is Cole Dawson. And a strike. Cole back at shortstop where I think he feels a little more familiar. A little more comfortable, I should say. Dawson, 322 batting average. Does lead the team. One and one to Cole Dawson. If he should get on, Trevor Madsen would be due up. Here is the 1-1. One -one. That one outside. And Cole Dawson's already seen more pitches than the pitcher Frazier's thrown to the first two batters. He got Carson Gohoy on a check swing on one pitch and Johnstone on a fly out on one pitch. The 2-1 coming up from Frazier. Cole Dawson swings it. A breaking ball. That bottom falls out of that thing. Goes to 2-2. Two two. Cole looking at the barrel of his bat, checking things out here. Wood bat in a Legion baseball field with smaller dimensions. It's fun, college baseball in a high school type field. And that one just missed inside. The collective exhale from the crowd, or inhale from the crowd and exhale. Still action in the Sioux Falls bullpen. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Payoff pitch coming up here from Dane Frazier. Nobody on here for the Busters in the bottom of the second. They lead three to one. Dane, excuse me, Cole Dawson fouls that one into the parking lot. There's a right-hander warming up for Sunfish. So we'll do it again. Cole Dawson, obviously first time he's ever played here, not being from Nebraska. Frazier gets a sign he likes. And the pitch. Down the third base line, and that is a foul ball. It's a high chopper on the grass. So four Legion teams play here. High school teams play here as well. Field gets a lot of use. Ryder Park, a lot of people have played here over the years. Cash Kolkowski, I remember doing, first game I ever did, he was played for home federal, went on to be a Husker. Here is the 3-2. And inside, it's a ball. Second walk for Dawson. That is the fourth walk of the game thrown by Frazier. So it brings up Trevor Matson, And Trevor, don't make a liar out of me. I said he's going to go deep at some point in this game. We've got only in the second inning. But there are some people going by on the sidewalks out by left field. So... Attention out there. That one down the third base line. He's pulling it foul. Trevor was hit by a pitch. His first time up in the left shoulder plate. No ball, one strike, two outs. Trevor will be playing at the All-Star game next Monday in Casper, Wyoming, along with Cole Dawson, who dives back at first base. McGuigan made it, but obviously he got hurt, so he couldn't go. Leif Holtine declining the offer. Appreciates it, but didn't want to go. Buster's the rest of the team will have three days off before playing on the road on Thursday, but they return home tomorrow to Casper for three games. Cole Dawson goes. The throw is low, and he is going to be safe. He was behind the runner. Good jump there by Cole on a stolen base. Love the aggressive base running. Get things going, make things happen. Dole was, or Cole was getting his timing over there at first base, watching Frazier, who threw over once. But So it's no balls and two strikes here to Trevor Madsen with a runner scoring position. 3-1 Hastings in the bottom of the second. Pitch on the way. That one into left field, and that's going to be a 
Foul ball. No, that is a fair ball. Good, good, good. Coming all the way around. Trevor Matson with a double. Cole Dawson will score from second base. That's an RBI double for Trevor Matson. That one looked fair. Definitely fair. I was like, come on. Home plate umpire did call it fair. RBI double there. Run scored by Cole Dawson. He scored two of the four runs. Excuse me, two of the three runs. Well, two of the four runs, I'm right. James Shimashita comes up. Sacrifice fly his first time up. They're playing him a little shallower in center. Strike one to the left-handed batter. Buster's lead four to one here, bottom two. First two batters went on two pitches. Cole Dawson walked. Trevor Madsen doubled. He stands on second, and Dawson scored on that double down the left field line. Here is the 0-1 coming up from Dane Frazier. Popped up third base side, slicing out of play and into the park area, and it's kind of hard to get that ball to where it lands here. Kind of have to go out the entrance and back around. A couple guys warming up in the bullpen here for Sioux Falls. Two righties, just lightly tossing. Dane Frazier had a tough first inning. Had the first two outs here, now laboring a little bit. 0-2 here to James Shimashita, who's the DH today. Shimmy hits that one into right field. Matson being held at third, slams on the brakes. He was going to go, but Wagner said, uh -uh, I'll stop. Grab the emergency brake, and he stops at third base. So Shimashita keeps the inning alive with a single. Two hits is hitting for the Busters, one run in. T. Cafferty comes up. He was standing on deck circle with his catcher shin guards on, just in case, and he takes them off, hands them to Ian Riley, walks him back in the dugout. The dugouts here have no fences or railings or anything in front of them, so you really have to pay attention. Pitch on the way here from Dane Frazier. Runners on the corners for Hastings. That one's upstairs to J.T. Cafferty. J.T. grounded out to second base, his... First time up. Buster sent eight men to play in the first inning. This is their sixth this inning. 2-0 here to JT Cafferty. It's a Sioux Falls fan walking by. Must be with the team, huh? Good crowd here on hand at Ryder Park. Shadows creeping in from the left side with from the trees. Allen upstairs. 3-0. Frazier upset with himself. Jim Ishida on first. Madsen stands on third. And the pitch. That one inside. Ball four. Four pitch walk to JT Caffrey. That's the fifth walk of the game issued by Frazier. These boots are made for walking is our theme for this game. Ian Riley, who walked his first time up, is walking into the batter's box. Bases full of busters. Matson on third, Shimashita on second. JT Cafferty over at first. Ian Riley playing pretty much straight away all through the field. None of the runners being held on. Why not? Bases loaded, you wouldn't hold them on. Ooh, check swing off the handle. Bounces towards the third base dugout to his... Home dugout, that's a strike, that's a tough strike. He didn't want to swing at that one. The ball's one strike, two outs. Four to one, Hastings. Grand Island crowd going to get into it here, cheer on their side busters at Ryder Park. Pitch on the way. Over the outside corner, pretty good pitch there from Frazier. The ball's in two strikes to Ian Riley. If he should reach, Lombardi would be two up next. Three on, one in this inning for the Busters. They lead four to one, bottom two. It's been two outs for a while, and then things have really started happening good for Hastings. Is That one is outside. Two pitches is all it took to get two outs for Dane Frazier, and then he gave up a, uh, a walk, a double, a single, and another walk. So really... Change. They still have a righty warming up for Sioux Falls. 
We had somebody pretty much the whole game just warming up over there. Here is the one and two, and strike three called, looking for strikeout of the game there by Frazier, and the Busters leave three on. Ian Riley will slow walk back to the dugout, but two hits, three left on, one run in, and Busters lead four to one. This is Sod Buster Baseball, and a message now from Graham Tire. You know Graham Tire for their quality tires and service, but did you know that they do brakes, batteries, and oil changes, and even shocks and struts? Graham Tire and Hastings has the quality products and great service you have come to expect from the Graham name. Rick and his crew will get you fixed up and right back on the road safely. And you can trust that the job was done right. That's peace of mind. Graham Tire and Hastings, West 2nd Street, open 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. A proud sponsor of Sodbuster Baseball. Hey, you. Your ad here. It's Josh Salmon of Salmon Says Media. Imagine turning on the radio or TV and hearing or seeing your business being advertised. Salmon Says Media offers voiceovers, full audio production, on-hold messaging for your phone, and more. Nearly two decades of experience. Salmon Says Media also offers radio imaging and podcast production. See us on Facebook. Salmon Says Media, the official media partner of the Hastings Sodbusters. Welcome back to Ryder Park. Josh Salmon joined by Steve Stein as the Busters lead 4-1, to one, top of the third. Steve, uh, you've called a lot of games here. Any, any number, any ballpark, see what I did there, uh, of how many games you have called here at Ryder Park? Um, you know, I did a lot more road games when I did Legion Ball. I mean, probably the, the neatest event is when, uh, you know, the, the Grand Island Home Federal uh, seniors hosted a state tournament and got to the championship game and just could not beat Creighton Prep. Mm -hmm. Prep had an unbelievable team that year. Uh, but uh, that was probably some of the, the, the highlight games. Uh, well, that, that home federal team was loaded. Yeah. But a uh, few few area tournaments, but uh, most of the home federal games I had a chance to do were, were on the road. All right, very cool. Good deal. So coming up here for Sioux Falls, it's going to be uh, Stroh, Brandon, and Olsen. As Mitch Stroh steps in, it is a 4-1 lead for the Hastings Sodbusters here at the home away from home. Ryder Park, a little bit different kind of field, and uh, we have seen runs scored in three of the first four at-bats, although no home runs to this point. Mitch Stroh stands the right-handed box. He laid down a nice sacrifice his first time up as DeBray brings the pitch inside for ball one, one ball, and no strikes. DeBray, 35 pitches thrown through his first two innings of work here for Hastings. You figure the bullpens are probably going to get involved in both the Sodbuster and the Sioux Falls lined up before this game is done. 1-0 delivery on the way, and that curves in there for strike one. One and one on Mitch Stroh. With Jonathan Brandon and Will Olson still to bat in this inning as the pitch comes in, and this one hit high in the air, carrying well toward left field, going back, and this is going to leave the park. The first home run. Here at Ryder is off the bat of Mitch Stroh, and Stroh has a home run, and Sioux Falls is within two. It's four to two. Well, we figured there'd be some home runs. I didn't think he would be one of the guys on the team that did it. You look, and that's his first home run of the season, so coming here uh, with them down, and now they moved within two. Four to two now, Buster's lead. His eighth RBI of the season, Mitch Stroh batting in the second spot for Sioux Falls. And here's Jonathan Brandon. Brandon struck out his first time up. The key in a park like this and in a game like this is just to stay away from the pre true free passes. And that's why uh, Dane Frazier really playing with uh, with fire with five walks for Sioux Falls in the first two innings because if you can just minimize the damage, solo home runs are probably not going to win the game today. Three and two run home runs very well could. So Jonathan Brandon taking ball one, one ball, and no strikes. The count on Brandon, who swings and fouls this pitch away. One and one on Brandon, batting in the right-handed box. Brandon went two for four yesterday, knocked in a run as Sioux Falls defeated Hastings eight to nothing. Hits were even at nine apiece, but Sodbusters just could not string any together to get a run home. Here's a ground ball to the left side. Shortstop's got it. Throw to first, Cole Dawson. Very solid as he throws over to Matson to gun down. Brandon as one has scored and one out now in the top of the third. It's four to two, Hastings on top of Sioux Falls. It's a little different seeing people walk in front of the press box. Here is Will. <laughs> yep, here's Will Olson, designated hitter. He doubled his first time up. One of the intricacies they did put in a new press box here 
not too many years ago, and it was higher, so people couldn't walk in front of the press box. First pitch is down low, four ball, one, one ball, and no strikes on Olsen, who had an RBI double his first time up. Olsen was a catcher in last night's game. And went one for six on the day. 1-0 delivery and swings and misses here. One and one on Will Olson. Olson out of Augustana College. He's from Omaha. Now, Augustana, uh, its home is in Sioux Falls. And as a matter of fact, the Sioux Falls Sunfish play at Augustana University. Pitch fouled back. Count goes to one ball and two strikes on Will Olson. Sioux Falls is a really good baseball town. They have a an American Association minor league team in that community as well. They play in a different field, so if you want to see some baseball, uh, Sioux Falls, very good summer home for uh, not only the uh, collegiate all-star team, but uh, minor league baseball. A high pop-up into left field, starting out, coming in, and now the shortstop going back, and Cole Dawson has this measured. Fortunately, he was able to make his way out there. Ian Riley took about four steps back before he comes sprinting in, and Dawson retreated from a shortstop spot to make the play on Will Olson. Yeah, he, he went a long way for that one, Dawson, and kind of a weird angle to get it to her in foul ground as the shortstop, but nice catch. And here's Kenneth Dutka, the center fielder, winning pitcher yesterday. He flew out to left field his first time up. 4-2, the score, Sodbusters on top as the pitch comes in, and this one is bounced back to the pitcher. Dubray's got it. He'll underhand toss to first, and... Sodbusters give up a home run, but then Dubray gets the next three, and we will head to the bottom half of inning number three. It's Hastings four, Sioux Falls two. This is Sodbuster Baseball. Five Points Bank has been proudly serving the Tri-City area for decades, and we are continuously finding ways to make your banking experience easy and enjoyable. We offer the best of both worlds with kind and welcoming employees in the bank while creating a strong online presence to accommodate your busy lifestyle. Our innovative technology adds layers of security while being easily accessible to all age groups. Stop into the Better Bank to learn more today. Have you heard the latest in Sodbusters news? Hey, this is Josh Salmon, voice of Hastings Sodbusters Baseball, inviting you to check out the Sodcast, the official Sodbusters podcast. Each episode gets you up to date on team info, the latest news, player and coaches interviews, and more. Join Brian Frew and myself for the Sodcast all through the baseball season. The Sodcast is available for listening on Spotify for free. Hasting Sodbusters Baseball Insides Inside Duncan Field with me, Josh Salmon, and co-owner Brian Frew. The Sodcast. Listen today. 4-2 as we head to the bottom half of inning number three. Sodbusters going to be batting the bottom of their order with Lombardi, Solis, and Cahoy against Dane Frazier. Frazier for this season had thrown only three and two thirds. He's trying for his third inning of the day. Now you'd think he'd probably be on a pretty short lead. He's, he's already thrown 56 pitches heading into this frame. And uh, the Sodbusters actually will see a new pitcher. I thought it was 27 out there. It is number 24 for Sioux Falls. Now those guys are built similar. They didn't look so like him. It is a new pitcher now, J.T. Mix. J.T. Mix is the new pitcher for Sioux Falls. So, Frazier is Mix done also for the from day. Augustana College yep. and had a good uh, good day at the plate yesterday for Sioux Falls. He was a he was the leadoff guy yesterday. He's only pitched in two games this year, just two thirds of an inning, allowing one run on one hit. Walked four, an ERA of 13 and a half coming into today. So kind of a bullpen day apparently for Sioux Falls. Four to two the score, as we'll see Jack Lombardi bat for the Hastings Sodbusters, looking for his first hit since joining the team as he bounces the first pitch foul. No balls and one strike. Walked his first time up today. Lombardi, product of the University of Nebraska Omaha from Akron, Illinois. Said he's a Cubs fan. I asked him if he's Cubs or White Sox. He said Cubs. 0-1 pitch. Duh, Cubs. Wow. Just misses, and the count goes to one ball and one strike on Jack Lombardi. Look at the bender on that thing. That <laughs> a lot of move on it. JT Mix atop the hill. The new pitcher now for Falls. Nice curveball there right across. And it's now one and two on Lombardi with Solis and Cahoy to bat here in the third. Nine in a game, professional uh, feel to it with uh, these uh, college uh, summer league players. And uh, tell you the 
Sodbuster's doing a nice job with the, with the home feel to it with all of the contests, um, minor league feel, if you will. And uh, going on the road here to Ryder Park for the home game. Count now two balls and two strikes on Lombardi, and the off-speed pitch is bounced to the left side. Sioux Falls shortstop has it, throws to first in time. Sioux Falls very solid on the middle infield as Benito Garcia takes care of Lombardi. One out for Luke Solis. Solis grounded out to third his first time up. Luke Solis is a product of UC San Diego, Chino Hills, California, six foot, 175 pounder, joining the team here recently and has been really good on the middle infield. Takes the first pitch outside. They do appeal down to field umpire, but he did not go around. One ball and no strikes on Luke Solis. Solis batting 204 coming into today and takes the pitch outside. It's two balls and no strikes on Solis. Sodbuster scoring three runs in the first, adding one in the second with the bottom half of inning number three. Hastings leads it four to two. And this pitch is popped up right side of the infield and the first baseman over in foul territory to make the play. Jesus Lee Cohn with the catch, two up, two down for the Sodbusters here in inning number three. Carson Gohoy coming up, very familiar, played a ton of games here back in the day and you know, he didn't play, I thought maybe he played uh, Legion ball here too. He just, or played high school ball. He just played Legion ball because at high school time he was in pole vault. Yep, yep. The Great Co pole vaulter. Cahoy family, tremendous pole vaulters. And the pitch is taken for a ball. One ball and no strikes. He grounded out his first time up. Carson Cahoy for the Hastings Sodbusters. Here is the 1-0 delivery. Fouls this one out of play. It goes to one ball and one strike on Carson Cahoy. Sodbusters plating three in the first. Just nice to see somebody come across the plate after nine hits yesterday and no runs scored against this Sioux Falls team. 1-1 one, one delivery, and this one swung on and missed. One ball and two strikes on Carson Cahoy. As Fremont beat Casper yesterday 10-1. Pier over Wheat City 6-5. Mining City took out Spearfish 5-2. Pitch fouled away. It remains one and two on Cahoy. Soros Valley beat Badlands three to one, and Western Nebraska pounded Canyon County 12 to five. Pretty good races going on in both the Lewis and Clark divisions in the second half. Cahoy trying to hold up and unable to do so. The pitch was in the dirt, so they have to throw down to complete the strikeout, but a tough couple of at-bats for Carson Cahoy, who goes down swinging this time, and the Sodbusters very quiet here in the third. It is four to two, Hastings over Sioux Falls as we head to the fourth, and this is Sodbuster Baseball. Yeah, different one, all right. Uh. Five Points Bank has been proudly serving the Tri-City area for decades, and we are continuously finding ways to make your banking experience easy and enjoyable. We offer the best of both worlds with kind and welcoming employees in the bank while creating a strong online presence to accommodate your busy lifestyle. Our innovative technology adds layers of security while being easily accessible to all age groups. Stop into the Better Bank to learn more today. Imagine visiting a place with historic housing districts, beautiful parks, and strolling through downtown shops. No, it isn't a fairy tale. It's Hastings, Nebraska. The Adams County Visitors Bureau invites you to experience Hastings, from bird watching to the Aqua Court Water Park to taking in a Sodbusters baseball game at historic Duncan Field. It all starts with the Adams County Visitors Bureau. What would a visit be without great eats? Hastings has plenty for all cravings. Start exploring at visithastingsnebraska.com. Experience Hastings with the Adams County Visitors Bureau. Nebraska land distribution. Six, seven, and eight coming up for Sioux Falls here in the fourth inning as it is Hastings on top of Sioux Falls by a score four to two. Hastings three in the first one of the second. Sioux Falls getting single runs in both the first and third innings as the Hastings Sodbusters trying to break a little streak here as they uh, had a nice three out of four performance at Pier winning but now have lost three in a row on the home field. It's a new home field tonight, so maybe that is the elixir for this Hastings team as Trevor Dubray out for his fourth inning of work. He's throwing 48 pitches as he will be going against Gannon Thompson. Thompson flew out to right field his first time up, and the first pitch is low into the dirt for ball one. One ball and no strikes on Gannon Thompson. Thompson out of Michigan State. He is a uh, Sioux Falls boy, as hometown boy playing the summer league 
in the hometown, but a Michigan State product. Count now two balls and no strikes on Thompson. Here is Dubray, and this pitch is fouled back. Two balls and one strike on Thompson. Nice job for Dubray so far to minimize damage, allowing the one run in the first. He gave up a solo home run in the third, but like I say, if you can get up solo home runs today, have a chance to win the game. Off-speed pitch is missing, and it's now three balls and a strike. You just can't walk people. The Sodbusters with 11 free passes yesterday, and even though the hits were even at nine apiece, that's one reason you lose eight to nothing. Lots of free passes. 3-1 delivery. Pitch is taken outside. It's a five-pitch walk to Gannon Thompson to open the fourth inning as Jesus Lee Cohn is coming to the plate. He's been solid for this Sioux Falls team. Lee Cohn, two for three yesterday, two RBIs, two runs scored, and here today he was able to reach on a walk and advanced on to third base. As he stands in the right-handed box. And still runner, a base, too. Runner at first and nobody out. The Sodbusters on top by a score of four to two. As Dubray out of the stretch, check of the runner and the pitch. Big swing, no contact. No balls, one strike on Lee Cohn. This Sioux Falls team, uh, you mentioned the fact that they do get after it on the bases. 157 stolen bases coming into today compared to 64 for the Sodbusters. Almost 100 more stolen bases for the Sunfishers. They are very aggressive. Runner at first, pretty big lead over there. No and one count as Dubray checks him out. Runner goes. The pitch is drilled to left field, carrying well. Ian Riley back and will make the catch just shy of the track. Hustling back to first will be Thompson. And there's one on and one out. A pretty loud out for Lee Cohn as any time a solidly struck ball heads to left, you think it's leaving Ryder Park, unlike Duncan Field where fly balls go to die. One on, one out now for Carter Tibbetts. There's uh, shadows creeping in on left field there from some trees and some light poles and stuff. Shadows on the third base side as well. Right field is and center field, first base still wide open in sun. Ryder Park, a bit smaller than Duncan Field as Ryder Park officially just a little over 300 feet, 312 down the lines, 380 to straightaway center. And the pitch he is across for a strike. No balls, one strike on Carter Tibbetts, who singled his first time up. 317 down the lines, 380 to straightaway center, about 360 to the alleys compared to Duncan. 367, 370 down the lines, 405 to the alleys, and 408 to straightaway center. As Dubray, check of the runner, throw over to first, and back in standing up is Gannon Thompson. Thompson will see if he does take off. Gannon Thompson, one of the guys who is on this team that has stolen almost 160 bases this year as the right-handed pitcher Dubray. Yeah, he's got 11 himself. Come set, throw over, and Thompson back in standing up. 6'7", big guy, but he runs well. He moves well for a big dude, an outfielder, good arm. Just towers over Trevor Matson. And there's so many teams this year that when the teams go on their respective baselines, man, you just hope there's not a brawl because uh, <laughs> it seems like it is, this, it is about the smallest team that we have seen in the uh, Expeditional League so far. Anyway, the Hastings Sodbusters compared to, compared to some of the dudes. Man, Fremont's got some big guys. 0-1 delivery is taken upstairs. One ball and one strike on Carter Tibbetts. One on, one out here in the fourth. Sioux Falls trails it by a score of 4-2. to two. Sodbuster scoring three in the first, one in the second. Sioux Falls single runs in the first and third. Sodbusters with green jerseys today, white numbers. And Sioux Falls has the gray jerseys. Runner goes, the pitch swung on and missed. Throw down to second base is not going to be in time. Count will be one and two on Tibbetts. And Thompson in scoring position with his 12th stolen base of the year. Yeah, you're talking about uh, maybe the guys got into a brouhaha. I think our guy, I think the bigger you are, the harder you fall. Our guys are scrappy and small and quick, so. You know, that's where it worked out once, David, Goliath, but other yeah. than that, really yeah. does, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll I put 10 bucks on our guys. How about that? Uh, I like your spirit, <laughs> but if, there you, we go. If, if you're really asking me to bet, you know. Uh, <laughs> one ball and two strikes. And the pitch. Little looper headed towards center field. That's a base hit. Runners will be at the corners with only one man out 
And a threat brewing here for Sioux Falls with their bottom of the order. A walk, a fly out, and a single. And Declan Beers will step to the plate. He flew out to center his first time up. So only the fourth hit given up by Dubray. And Sioux Falls starting to get used to him. A couple times to the order there sometimes it takes to see a pitcher. And that's what's happening here. Beers, a good day yesterday. So he went two for three with two runs scored. Part of the nine hit attack for Sioux Falls. Soundbusters had nine hits as well, but no runs. They have yet to win on this little homestand, uh, falling twice to Casper, and then the loss yesterday to Sioux Falls. One more game with Sioux Falls, and then it's Casper again back at Duncan Field Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Pitch taken outside for a ball, one ball and no strikes on Beers, who flew out to center field his first time up. Soundbusters defensively have Logan Johnstone in center, Ian Riley in left, Carson Cahoy in right as Dubray checks the runners at first and third. Out of the stretch, brings home the pitch. Low for a ball, two balls and no strikes to the number nine hitter. Don't want to walk this guy because then it's Garcia and the rest of the top of the order coming up for Sioux Falls. Yeah, it's important out. You got to get this one, leave two more on base. You know, Sioux Falls does leave a lot. They had 13 left on base yesterday. That's the scary thing. They score eight and leave 13. It could have been really ugly. Was not the most entertaining of games yesterday. Most of the most of the games this year, even in Sodbuster losses, they've been fun. I mean, they've had uh, they've had their moments yeah, where sure. you know. But uh, yesterday was just it was a grind. It was a grind to get yeah. through that one. Well put. I think uh, had uh, had the scoreboard operator, one of the pitchers for the Sodbusters, put it well yesterday, saying, "The dog days of summer are here." 2-0 delivery, and that's rifled into left field. Ian Riley right there, runner at third tags. Here comes the throw home, and he is going to be safe. Took one hop. If it was been a little bit lower hop, maybe they would have had a chance to get out Gannett Thompson. As it stands, it's a sacrifice fly for Beers. He brings home a run, and it's now 4-3. to three. Yeah, the throw is on the first base side. If he would have threw it on the third base side, he would have had him. Just a little off. But a good effort nonetheless, and now top of the order, Benito Garcia up there. He reached on an air his first time up, scored a run, and he grounded out. So the leadoff walk comes back to haunt. Trevor Dubrez gave it up single runs in the first, third, and fourth, trying to survive this inning still with the Sodbusters on top. Garcia stands in the right-handed box, throw over to first, and back in safely will be Carter Tibbetts. So Tibbetts running at first, and like I say, these guys could take off at any time. He's got five stolen bases this year. He's already stole once today. They have seven guys who have at least 10 steals on their roster. And really, you look at their team leaders. They're a very balanced team. A lot of guys very close in terms of RBIs, and got one of their home run guys has five, but several with two and three. Just Runs, there. hits pretty close, just pretty balanced, solid team in their first year in the Expedition League. Throw over to first, they're trying to keep Tibbetts close, and he's able to get back in standing up. At this point, he has Debray read very well. Yeah, they were supposed to play last year and decided to uh, hold off on the inaugural season until this year because of the COVID thing. Very few teams played last year. Hastings was one of them that did. Six teams in the Expedition League, fielded teams. As Dubray set to go against Garcia, and the pitch is right there for strike one. No balls, one strike on Benito Garcia. One run home in the inning. Sioux Falls looking to cash more. It's four threes. The Sodbusters have been out hit four to three, but they lead the game four to three as they came up with three runs on just one hit in the first. As Dane Frazier. Had some control issues with a couple of walks, make it three walks, and a hit batsman. Spray paying a lot of attention to the runner over there. Another throw over. Four runs, three hits for the Sod Busters. They have the lone error of the game. That came on the first batter of the contest. This guy, Garcia, who grounded to the shortstop and the throw pulled the first baseman off. Shot down the third base line, but foul. It's two strikes on Benito Garcia out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. Goes to Arizona Western Junior College. So probably going to be exploring his four-year options. 
Next, in New you ever been to New Mexico? It's beautiful driving through there. Yep, nice, uh, nice state. 4-3 the score, Sodbusters try to maintain that lead here in the fourth as Dubray shakes off one side, shakes off another, and now he's set to go with catcher J.T. Cafferty behind home plate. Dubray, a check of the runner, and the pitch. Line drive, center field, base hit, the inning continues, and Sioux Falls is going to go first to third as hustling his tibbets and uh, runners at the corners now with Mitch Stroh coming to the plate. Two hits this inning and five in the game, and Coming into this inning, they only had three hits total. So they're starting to figure out Dubray here a little bit, and he's got to make some adjustments as Luke Bay comes out to talk to him. John J.T. Cafferty making the long walk up there too, and you know, he's trying to figure some things out and try to get this third out. Because you've got the guy who left the yard the last time up there, so I'm sure they're going to be talking not only about how to approach this hitter. First and third situation, a lot of possibilities for a team that runs well. They could think double steal as well. So Sioux Falls with a lot of options here to get the tying run across. And you've seen the spreadsheets that Luke Bay makes. They're, he just dissects everybody, how they want to pitch to each guy. So he knows exactly what he wants to do here with Stroh, and that's what he's relaying right now to his pitcher, Dubray. 4-3, the sod busters on top, but that lead very much in jeopardy as the defensive alignment who mentioned Sodbusters behind home plate today with J.T. Cafferty at first base. It's Trevor Matson, second base Jack Lombardi at third. Luke Solis, the shortstop is Cole Dawson. And the outfield left to right, Riley, Johnstone, and Cahoy. A lot less ground to cover here at Ryder Park in Grand Island than at Duncan Field in Hastings, where we will return tomorrow as the Sodbusters take on Casper for a three-game series. Casper was pounded yesterday by Fremont by a count of 10 to 1. Those two teams wrapping up their two-game series before Casper returns to Central Nebraska. Yeah, they've lost both of those. As Dubray checked the runner at first, checked the runner at third. And gets back atop the hill here. So we see Mitch Stroh in the right-handed box. And the pitch. It's down low for a ball. Two days ago, Sioux Falls had a wacky matchup with Fremont as they led it 4 nothing before Fremont scored 11 runs in the seventh, and then Fremont had to hold on for dear life. 11-10 was the final in that one before Sioux Falls came here, and Fremont headed home to play Casper yesterday. The Runner goes, the pitch is taken for a strike, no throw down to second as they basically concede that one as Benito Garcia now in scoring position at second base with Tibbetts at third. Yeah, wasn't it one nothing the day before with Fremont and Sioux Falls? And then yep. the next day it was 11-10, so <laughs> yep. almost no offense in the first day and a ton in the second. And a lot of offense late. 1-1 one, one pitch is on the way from Dubray, and this one is bounced in front of home plate, right back to Dubray. He throws to first in time, but Sioux Falls does come up with one run. Out of all of that, one run on two hits. They leave a pair, and we will head to the bottom half of inning number four. It's Sioux Falls and Hastings. Hastings leads it 4-3. to three. This is Sodbuster Baseball. I'm a working mom. I don't have a lot of time for grocery shopping. That's why Sam's Club is so convenient. I can get the food my family loves, household supplies, and be on my way. My husband likes that they offer oil changes and tire services. Really saves him time. They have early hours for Plus Club members so I can beat the crowd on the weekend. Plus, Sam's Club offers free curbside pickup. Order online or in the app. Sam's Club, Grand Island. Sam's Club, a proud partner of Sod Buster Baseball. For the best in promotional videos, custom designs, photography, websites, and more, it's Provident Promotions. You've got the business. Now make it stand out with Provident Promotions. Provident Promotions can help you design your logo, website, custom make your promotional video, and shoot just the right photo for your company or business needs to be seen everywhere. And they even offer email marketing services and social media management. Let them help you from start to finish. 111 North Burlington Avenue, Suite 110 in Hastings. A proud sponsor of Sodbuster Baseball. <laughs> As we head to the bottom half of inning number four, the Sodbusters will have the top of the order up there, Johnstone, Dawson, and Matson, as they will get their first look at JT Mix, who came in and set the Sodbusters down in order in the third. Trevor Dubray allowing 
Three runs on five hits so far, just two of those runs earned as the first run was unearned because of the error allowing Garcia to reach back in inning number one. Dubray now up to 68 pitches thrown. Uh, JT Mix threw 13 pitches in his first inning of work. Logan Johnstone steps in the left-handed box. He singled his first time up, scored a run. He's one for two on the day as he will face the right-hander, JT Mix, who's got a filthy curveball. JT brings the pitch home, and a fastball is fouled away. No balls, one strike on Logan Johnstone. A nice addition to this roster. Came in late. Gonzaga recruit out of Los Gatos, California. Yeah, a month ago he was playing high school baseball. So... <laughs> 0-1 delivery on the way, and that is missing for a ball. One ball and one strike. As we've got, the, we don't want to tell the general manager to move, but you know, by golly, <laughs> we've got we got, got, got sod buster staff members not realizing we're trying to call a game here. As the uh, uh, pitch is grounded back up the middle, short stops got it, throws to first in time. And uh, Scott can stand wherever he wants to. Right. Yeah. Doggone it. But that Overmiller guy, he needs to move. Yeah. So well played by the shortstop, Anito Garcia throws out Logan Johnstone. There's one out here in the bottom of the fourth. 4-3, four, Sodbusters gets in, you delete it. See, there's no concourse, so this is their concourse. Yes. Yep, this that's is right. their concourse level. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to yell at your boss to get down in front because, you know, this may be our last game. That's you. <laughs> Cole Dawson stands at the plate now, and the pitch is just missing. Four ball, one ball, and no strikes. Dawson has reached twice. He has scored twice. Pair of walks today for the Expedition League All-Star. Going to be headed to Casper along with the first baseman, Matson. Off-speed pitches across for a strike. One ball and one strike on Cole Dawson. JT Mix throws a steady diet of curveballs. Lots of them. 4-3 the score. The side busters lead it despite being out. Hit 5-3. Fastball foul, and the count goes to one and two on Dawson. And Mix has done a nice job since coming in, retiring the first four he has faced as he works quickly atop the hill. Looks in at his catcher, Carter Tibbetts, and brings home the one-two pitch. Low into the dirt. Count goes to two balls and two strikes on Cole Dawson. Mix was a shortstop yesterday, wasn't he? He was a shortstop. Yep. As... Uh, they have a lot of guys who can pitch and play in the field. Uh, very diverse Sioux Falls team in their first year and have done a nice job, over 500 so far. Has had an excellent second half. Called strike three. Dawson couldn't pull the trigger. He just go down. Strikes is the second strikeout victim of JT Mix. Yeah, still hasn't given up a hit yet. Buster's trying to figure out how to get something off of him, and maybe big number three, four can do it here, Trevor Matson. Matson just needs one. He's been hit by a pitch. He doubled home a run, one for one on the day. And Duncan Field, you always think, well, two outs. You're going to need two or three hits to get a, a run home. Here at Ryder Park, one swing of the bat could give you an opportunity to extend the lead. And you just hope that Sodbuster players are still within themselves in terms of not swinging for the fences. Pitch on the outside corner for strike one. One ball and one strike on Trevor Matson. Now we call him, well, they call him JT Mix. Boy, he really mixes up his pitches here. Mix shakes off the first sign here. Now we'll bring the pitch home. Off speed and no contact there on the swing from Trevor Matson. He's down to the count. One ball and two strikes. He's got a couple different curveballs he throws. It's it's interesting. As Matson played at Arcadia, now got to go to Gardner Webb. Tried to check his swing, and they say he went around regardless. And the Sodbusters down in order for the second straight time against JT Mix. No runs on no hits. We are through four complete. The Sioux Falls Sunfish, the Sodbusters of Hastings. Hastings with the lead four to three, and this is Sodbuster Baseball. Summer means Sodbusters Baseball and hot weather, so make sure you stay cool with Ruts. Ruts Heating and AC is your number one source for residential and commercial HVAC services in Nebraska. For over 45 years, Ruts has been a name to trust for repairs, installation, and maintenance work on time. Call Ruts Heating and Air Conditioning today to discuss your HVAC needs, free estimates, and the guarantee of their work. Whenever your heating or AC needs, trust Ruts. Visit RutsHeating.com. Nebraska has some of the most beautiful state parks in the country. And to celebrate their 100th anniversary, the Nebraska Lottery announces our great outdoors getaway promotion. Through June 8, 2021, enter any non-winning $5 Nebraska State Park Centennial Scratch Ticket for a chance to win a two-night stay at a Nebraska State Park. 
$2,021 in cash and Nebraska Lottery and Game and Parks merchandise. State parks as great as ours deserve a promotion as great as this. Top prize odds, one in 80,000. We got a pitching change here for the Sodbusters. It's like Matt Hallback going into pitch here. Scott Galusa joins me in the booth. How's it going, Ryder Park? You love it here. You know, this is, uh, I've, I've coached a few games here. I live about, I can hear, I can hear the, uh, uh, the PA guy from my, my yard. Uh, so this is pretty comfortable for me. It's a little bit different kind of baseball uh, tonight, although we've only seen one ball leave the yard. I expect we'll see maybe a couple more for sure, sure tonight. But it's nice to be able to bring um, our, our show to Grand Island and, and try to show people what we do down there. And uh, so it was, a, it was a lot of work and a lot of effort. We were going at about 8 o'clock this morning, and, of course, we threw in a youth baseball camp from 9 to 12 oh, just wow. in case we weren't busy enough. But uh, we started trucking up here around noon and got it all taken care of, and we're, we're happy with how the procedure's gone for sure. Jonathan Branding comes up. It'll be Brandon Olson, uh, Dutka. It'll be the 3-4-5 hitters to up here for Sioux Falls. Hastings still leads 4-3, to three and... First pitch for Hallbeck is inside. Any memories particular of any games that stand out to you, Scott, here at Ryder? Well, um, let's see. I would say the one thing I remember, um, I was coaching here with the with the Wells boys and Coach Coach Kissick, and uh, I told Parker Upton to, to guess first pitch breaking ball. I said, I don't like to guess very often, but I think he's going to throw you a first pitch breaking ball, and he hit it out in the trees. Um, uh -huh. So I smiled, and, and that was kind of a fun memory. And we had a lot of good, um, a lot of good memories here, not only on the field but watching here. And there's a lot of history here, and uh, we're just we're just thankful to have the opportunity to come up here. Uh, the Hinky boys have, have been very helpful in us trying to get here too. Jay's here tonight. Um, Monty helped us with uh, with some. Uh, 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 operation stuff sure. here to make sure everything's gone well and it looks like it's going well in here and so it's it's really nice to be able to bring this here and we're excited to be part of it but yeah it's been fun uh we had a district game here i remember trey kissick uh sod buster and islander um through a couple great games here that i remember sitting here on the bench and uh also some heartache but uh it's a nice they did a really good job thanks to todd mccoy and his staff uh today this is about as nice as we've seen it look matter of fact a couple of uh uh, a couple of people here are a lot said they've never seen it look better. So hats off to, like I said, Todd and his staff at the city. They've been really, really good for us here to try to make this happen. So we're really glad to be here, and we're we're hoping to be here two or three times every year is is the goal. So this is sort of our uh, trial run for it, sort of dress rehearsal to to see how it goes, and and uh, we're we're looking forward to continuing to play a little sodbuster baseball up at Ryder, and we're all comfortable in here. We've all been here before, except for Nate. Uh, but this is pretty pretty normal spot, and that could be a rider ball. Deep to left, Ian Riley at the fence, and that's a goner. Mm -hmm. That thing's out of your second home run of the day for Sioux Falls, and that one is Jonathan Brandon taking a 3-2 pitch deep off Matt Hallback, and now we're tied at four. Now I heard my man Steve talk about this a little bit too, and he was beating us up. He had to keep reliving last night, which was not fun to watch, but – I wanted to smack him because he kept. Re re I had to relive it, relive it, relive it. But I didn't even print out the stats from yesterday. That's I know, I, I know. And you look at, you know, I, here's what I said. First of all, you know, you go to a baseball game, you never know what you're going to see. And last night, I took a picture of the scoreboard because you don't see very often eight, eight, one, and zero, nine, zero, and you lose. Yeah. Um. So that again, just, just self-destructed yesterday and it was too bad but but we that that's an out at our place we what we just saw that's a that's a fly ball to left field and it's it's just different and and we just have two so uh, just such a unique and wonderful ballpark down there at duncan and this is absolutely the polar opposite of it um but again that's fun too it's just a different brand of baseball and we're happy to bring the expedition league and uh, the sod buster here to grant on will olson the uh, dh is up he's one of two today it's a 2-0 pitch here to him and that one called strike. Talk about Matt Hallback a little bit here. Uh, he is going. Is he going to San Diego? Is that uh, he's going to University of California, San, San Diego? Diego. Yep. Uh -huh. um, our connection there is uh, Matt Harvey's a Nebraska guy, and talked to Matt, and uh, Matt's been uh, really willing to to help us out. We were supposed to get a couple kids last year, but with COVID, it didn't work out. Um, but yeah, Matt's a Matt's a, a guy they're going to look at um, multiple places. He's been he's a he's a big guy, but he's a he's a polished outfielder. Played center field in high school. 
they project him as a first base, third base, maybe a pitcher. But uh, so we're giving a chance of the way. We really like how he swings the bat, um, and and they think he's going to be a a guy that has a chance to hit for him right away. There's another guy we were supposed to have from them that would have been coming handy at this point, but uh, um, one of the pitchers was supposed to be here for us, but he hurt his arm, and so that's a, another school that we we got three guys from and hope to get more in the future. And does a nice job out there in San Diego, and it's always hard to get a guy to come from San Diego to Grand Allen, Nebraska. So a ground ball to Cole Dawson being ruled a hit. Is that correct, Steve? Is that what you had? Okay, hit, hit is what we're given on that one. Uh, before that, Will Olson flew out to right field, and so one on here, one out, four four. We're tied. Gannon Thompson comes up. Thompson, big guy, six seven out there, but he moves like a cat. Yeah, he's he's that foot, a good first step, good instincts. And if you ask Cole, by the way, Cole would say E six, but I see what Brian said, especially when it was tipped, and and that's kind of how it goes. But that's a Cole. That's a Cole. Um, a gold glove, a junior college gold glove winner that, that, that's going to tell you he needs to make that play. But a uh, Almost got him there, pickoff move by Matt Hallback, a great move for right-hander. Yep. Almost caught Duck snoozing off of first. Yep, good feet there for Matt. Matt is really a really nice hitter. I think he's, uh, in the little that we've seen of him, he was a guy that we can – depend on. I think he's a middle of the lineup guy. He's a guy that can hit behind Matt's and be successful for us. And I uh, got a little dinged up and peer with an ankle. And so pinch hit last night and glad to see him pitching because he's got to land on that ankle. He must be feeling good enough to do that. Here's the one, one. And that one outside. I saw him, uh, him and Johnstone both getting snacks before the game and both of them going to be just kind of young guys, high school guys, kind of making friendships here, which well, is cool. Well, yeah, those two guys knew each other before. They're from okay. the same town. Okay. Uh, they've played baseball against each other their whole life. They traveled out here together. Their families are together. And so despite the fact that they've never been teammates until now, they've known each other a long time. And, and that's just another thing that I think is so neat about what we do when we bring these kids in from all over the country to – to be together for about 80 days, and uh, it's fun. Those relationships last a long time, and Casey Burnham, one of my buddies, always said, so crazy that we're with these guys every day for 80 days, and then we may not see them ever again. Um, it's just kind of a neat thing that we do, but, but they all say they pay attention to one another after this, and whether it's social media or seeing how they're playing one way or the other, and it's just a neat, it's just a neat, neat thing. Two balls, two strikes here to Gannon Thompson with Ducka leading off of first. We're all... Tied up at four piece, throw down the second, and did they get him? Strikeout, but he is safe stealing the bag, so the stolen base and the strikeout. Thompson goes down. That's the first strikeout by Matt Hallbeck. I'm not sure what Anthony was doing. He was walking towards us when the play is behind him, but the umpire, apparently yeah. he'd already made up his mind. Jesus Lee Cohn comes yeah, up. and You thought it looked cool? <laughs> this guy uh, this guy looks like a linebacker, but he's actually a pretty good ball player. He's he is. He uh I gave him a little bit of a hard time last night. We we feed as you if you haven't seen us before. We we feed <laughs> we feed both teams after the game and we feed the opposing team before the game. And uh, to say the least, he's got his money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> I think he went through the taco line. My wife said he went through the taco line five times last night. <laughs> uh, so I don't I don't think he was hungry. And before before the uh, game today. Uh, one of our great sponsors, Harlan, over at Pizza Ranch. They were over there at Pizza Ranch. I'm sure he he did a number. He did a number over there too. Uh, <laughs> All hands on deck. Yeah, yeah, very very personable young man. Had a visit with him last night. Got a big hit for them when the game was still on the line last night, um, and didn't try to do too much, which is what I sort of talked to some of our guys about. He just sort of flipped the bat on there and, and uh, steered one to right field. But you don't always have to hit it super hard to be effective. You just have to put it in play and have a good approach, and he did a nice job for them last night. 1-1 here to Lee Cohn, and, you know, he's stolen two bases in the last two days. He's got six on the – seven on the season, which is kind of funny too, big big cat. You know, in, in my in my career of baseball, which is, wasn't very long, um, I've got a few stolen bases, and they were usually against the guys I knew because they knew I was there and wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and uh, so that's kind of what happened with Mr. Ortiz too. They wouldn't think he's going. Um, but, hey – you don't have to be fast to be a good base runner, and he made some good choices and did a nice job. Two and one here to Lee Cohn. Runner on second, Matt Hallback in relief of Dubray here in the bottom of the fifth. Josh Salmon talking to Scott Galusha. Runner goes. That one gets away from Cafferty, so we'll rule a stolen base on that. That's the second one 
Uh, no, yeah, second one for Dudka in the game. Yeah, I think that just goes as a stolen base. Um, he was already in motion, so yep. that's how I'm ruling yep. it. 3 1 the count here. They work on the run. I was talking to the guys about the, the field, and they said the two or three guys told me that the mound seemed a little flat to them. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dirt, dirt will do that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. that's only been the case here from <laughs> for about the last 100 so odd years. <laughs> uh, it just, it's just different. And so. Uh, Deep to center, back is Johnstone, and does make the catch right before the warning track to retire the side. So two hits, one run in on the home run, and they leave one on base. Uh, six runners left on base for Sioux Falls. Buster's coming back here in the bottom of the fifth. Scott coming back as well. Yep. This is Sod Buster Baseball, and take a word from our sponsors right now, Rutz Heating and Air Conditioning. Summer means Sodbusters baseball and hot weather, so make sure you stay cool with Ruts. Ruts Heating and AC is your number one source for residential and commercial HVAC services in Nebraska. For over 45 years, Ruts has been a name to trust for repairs, installation, and maintenance work on time. Call Ruts Heating and Air Conditioning today to discuss your HVAC needs, free estimates, and the guarantee of their work. Whenever your heating or AC needs, trust Ruts. Visit rutsheating.com. Nebraska has some of the most beautiful state parks in the country. And to celebrate their 100th anniversary, the Nebraska Lottery announces our great outdoors getaway promotion. Through June 8, 2021, enter any non-winning $5 Nebraska State Park Centennial Scratch Ticket for a chance to win a two-night stay at a Nebraska State Park. $2,021 in cash and Nebraska Lottery and Game and Parks merchandise. State parks as great as ours deserve a promotion as great as this. Top prize odds, one in 80,000. Well, pitching James going on here for Sioux Falls, bringing the third pitcher of the day. This is Nathan McClure, another right-hander. So the curveballer JT Mix is done for the day. Bullpen day here for the Sunfish. Time for the Busters to get the bats back going. They scored three in the first, one in the second, and haven't scored since. It'll be uh, Shimashita, JT Cafferty, and Riley. Scott Galusha back with me here in the booth in the bottom of the fifth. And, Bullpen day for Sioux Falls, and we know what yeah. that's all about. Yeah, 14 that, games that, in a row, hey, Busters have had. We have four. This is, uh, we're, we're this getting is down there. This is 11 yeah. in 10 days. So, And so I don't really care how many pitchers you have. that You're still going to run sure. out of pitching at this point, and that's just part of summer baseball. Uh, Jackson Rocha did a nice job for us last night. I informed him that he is now a reliever out of our bullpen, <laughs> and he smiled, and he said, that's fine. I'll be more than happy to help us out any way you can, which is great. Um he, you know, we, we love we love kids that are willing to do whatever it takes, and he was happy about it. He started shaking his arm and said, I'm ready to go. Uh, so you'll see Jackson Rocha out there again. Um, an outstanding young man. Hasn't gone his way this summer, but it hasn't deterred anything um, that, that he's done for us. He works hard. He helped us out at the, uh, at the camp for a couple days and, and just, again, um, been a nice part of our, our our roster, and he's been a good representative for the Sodbusters in our communities. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to him after the game about the pitching, and he said he hadn't pitched since high school. He was but when he got when I got to the park yesterday, he was warming up at, in the bullpen when yeah. I got there an hour and a half before the game started. And so, uh, something he talked to coach about, and they said, "Hey, we need some arms. Why not?" And he came out and did a good job. Yeah, he threw a couple of pitches. Uh, saw him pitch on Monday night when we were trying to make a decision, and he looked more than comfortable and just fine. And did a good job. James Shimashita comes up. One uh, single for him. Sacrifice fly earlier. Takes strike here from Norris McClure. McClure right-hander. Both were barreled, too, by Shimashita. Band He's had a little bit of uh, uh, poor luck, actually. He's hit the ball harder than really anybody but Matson in the last couple weeks. And although his average isn't bad, but he doesn't have as much to show for it as maybe he deserves. I wore my Padre hat yesterday just for him since he's a Dodger yeah, fan, but I don't yeah. think he saw it. You should have just went and told him. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Well, I was going to hold it up in the air when I saw him yesterday. One ball, one strike. I did talk to him the day before. He's, he's a good egg. Yeah, nice he's kid. a good guy. Uh, he's another guy that we have we have offered back for uh, 2022. We'll, we'll see what happens. But we're kind of in the process of uh, asking some guys back and letting them know the invitation is there. And uh, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, Brian and I a couple days ago and then uh, Chandler and I and Luke and I, we all kind of went over our roster with guys that we want back and 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 whatnot. And you would think, um, for our record as is as unattractive as our record is, um, I think we were we're all sort of surprised how many guys we would willingly want back. 
Now, part of that is is we like the right kind of kids to be an example for our community and do what we need to do. But uh, but again, we there's a, there's quite a few guys that we take our chances with in 2022. Shim. And know that a, a year of experience would really help them. Sure. Shimashita grounds out to second base there and brings up JT Cafferty. Yeah, it's always uh, nice for a player to be well wanted back, first yeah. of all. And uh, Shimashita there from, from San Diego, he was uh, from Claremont, we found out, which is a little north of where I grew up. But he knew exactly the high school I went to and everything, so that was kind of fun. Yeah, that's kind of neat, isn't it? Uh, one ball, no strikes here to JT. He's played on this field many times over the years, playing for five points in Hastings. You know, it's funny. I w we were here of course, very early to get this ready to go uh, tonight, and it was fun. And and it was about 4.45, and Brian, you can hear me. You'll get a kick out of this too. So I'm sitting there visiting with people, and here comes Jacob Shaw, Hastings grad. Sure. He's played here a 100 times probably. Guess what he did when he walked in? He walked in and turned to the right and went to the, went well, to the, the visitor's dug dugout. Yeah. And I, I let him go. I saw him doing it because I knew exactly <laughs> what happened when he walked by the gate. And I said, uh, Jake, uh, we're over here today. And he kind of <laughs> smiled and turned around and goes, oh, I guess that's just habit. Yeah. So, yeah, we have a few kids that have been here very uh, uh, quite often. And and it was fun to hear stories about everything in the last couple of days when they, they knew we were going to do this. It was pretty fun how many hitters were um, – we even had a few monetary bribes to get in the lineup. And then um, the correct, the absolute opposite of that was <laughs> we had several pitchers say they were not available on Thursday and their arm was sore and everything else. But uh, it's, it really hasn't been a different. I, I, I was a little scared that it might be a giant slugfest. Um, but both both sides have done a pretty good job at throwing strikes for the most part. And so it's not it's not too much different baseball than we're used to. A walk there to JT Cafferty, so runner on here with the Busters. We're all tied at four apiece in the bottom of the fifth. I'm Josh Salmon. That's Scott Galusha, Steve Stein on the broadcast, Nate Miller to our left tonight. And he's usually to my right, so it's bizarro world. <laughs> I you normally yeah. can't see the you know opposing team's bullpen. I can see everything over there, and I can't see ours. So. It's a little backwards here, but I love it. It's nice. Yeah. It's been a while since I've done a game at Ryder. Well, I tell you what, it's it's nice. To, I mean, we've all been here a lot, which is which is just neat for us to be able to bring it here. But it but it is nice to be to change it a little bit, and I just love that beautiful view from Duncan Field and the Hastings community has been great for us, and the city of Hastings and Jeff Hasenstab and his staff, Cody Williams, has done a great job for us. Um, and it's it's nothing against us at uh, uh, Duncan Field, but we just want to continue to expand that footprint and continue to uh, to brand the Sodbusters. And I think a, a logical choice to do that is to play in Grand Allen every once in a while. So McClure throws over to first, JT back, one and one count here to Ian Riley. Ian has struck out looking and walked. Busters haven't scored since the second inning. They scored three in the first. Ooh, that's a close play at first. Uh, for three in the first and one in the second, and then Sioux Falls put one in the first, one in the third, one in the fourth, and one in the top of this inning with bottom five. Had a real nice conversation with Ian's coach yesterday, and uh, I think you guys would all be surprised to hear what I'm going to tell you. Um, Ian is – is we know Ian's a great athlete and a very talented base runner, and all think he's a good hitter. And he's got a little pull happy here for us because it's, we were trying to change his – uh, plate approach, but I talked to um, Coach Gilliard at uh, Cloud County, and Ian had 10 home runs um, last spring for for Cloud County. And you guys want to guess, and he's a left-handed hitter, you want to guess how many were oppo? Out of 10? Out of 10. Uh, I'm going to say six. Seven. Wow. And he said the problem is Ian sort of plays to the conditions, which we're trying to work on, not him not doing it. So he was the most successful when the when the wind was blowing in from right, and he knew he had to let the ball travel and work on hitting the ball the other way. But Ian was a 300 hitter at JUCO with 10 home runs and a lot of double, a lot of second uh, extra base hits. Ground out there to second base to get the force of Cafferty and Lombardi is done, and so are the Busters here in the fifth. Scott, thanks for coming on with hey, me. You bet. As always, thanks. good nostalgia day here as well at Ryder, right. at uh, Ryder Park, and we'll be back. Steve will have you in the sixth inning. This is Sodbuster baseball from Ryder Park in Grand Allen, and now word from Graham Tire. You know Graham Tire for their quality tires and service, but did you know that they do brakes, batteries, and oil changes, and even shocks and struts? Graham Tire and Hastings has the quality products and great service you have come to expect from the Graham name. Rick and his crew will get you fixed up and right back on the road safely. And you can trust that the job was done right. That's peace of mind. 
Ram Tire and Hastings, West 2nd Street, open 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. A proud sponsor of Sodbuster Baseball. Hey, you. Your ad here. It's Josh Salmon of Salmon Says Media. Imagine turning on the radio or TV and hearing or seeing your business being advertised. Salmon Says Media offers voiceovers, full audio production, on-hold messaging for your phone, and more. Nearly two decades of experience. Salmon Says Media also offers radio imaging and podcast production. See us on Facebook. Salmon Says Media, the official media partner of the Hastings Sodbusters. We head to the sixth inning, and it's a 4-4 tie between Sioux Falls and Hastings. Steve Stein, Josh Salmon, Nate Miller, appreciate Scott Galusha coming up. And and uh, you know, I'm sorry to bring up last night's game, but, you know, it, it, it's just part of history. And, uh, and so, yeah, he was given – I think, you know, you, I talked about getting fired for telling him to, to move out front. He may fire me for uh, uh, for mentioning last night's game. You're too, not going to so. get a Christmas card from Scott no, Galusha no, this year. no. 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 Hey, but I'll tell you what, though. He did mention Jackson Rocha. That was one of the neat stories yeah, that did cool. come out of uh, last night's game, his relief performance. Here, it's the hands of the bullpen here. A 4-4 tie as Matt Hallback out for his second inning of work. He allowed a solo home run and an infield single in his first inning, but was able to get a couple of fly ball outs and his first strikeout of the night as well. Sioux Falls bats eight, nine, and one against Hall back here. Yeah, I was hoping Buster was going to get something going. They had the walk last thing and just weren't able to capitalize on it. So we'll see what Matt Hall back can uh, get done against the number eight hitter, Carter Tibbetts. And Tibbetts has had a very good day, two for two. Both of those at bats coming against Trevor Dubray, who will not figure in the decision here at uh, Ryder Park. Hall back brings the pitch home and a swing and a miss. No balls, one strike on Carter Tibbetts. Product of the University of New Mexico. Goes to New Mexico, but his home is Wyzetta, Minnesota. So a guy who uh, has gotten a, a wide range of geographic experiences during his life. And he takes a strike here, quickly two strikes on Carter Tibbetts, who is splitting catcher catching duties. Will Olson was the catcher yesterday. And you see most of the Expedition League teams carrying three catchers. Bouncing ball foul that remains no balls and two strikes on Carter Tibbetts for the Who Falls Sunfish in their first year of existence under head coach Walker Bullington. He's the head coach of Rend Lake Junior College in Illinois. And that's a guy that I would like to sit down and talk to and hear about some of his experiences. Guy who's coached in Puerto Rico and China, wow. among other places. No balls, two strikes, and the pitch. Swing and a miss at one in the dirt. JT Cafferty picks up, throws to first to Matson to complete the strikeout. So Tibbetts is down on strikes, the second strikeout for Matt Hallback. That's a good, uh, good start there for Matt Hallback. You need to hold him here and let the bats come around in the sixth inning, bottom of the inning. To Clan Beers, bats now. He had a sacrifice, flies last time up. He is 0 for 1 with a couple of fly ball outs. Sodbusters just trying to keep him in the park right here. Two home runs, both for Sioux Falls today to get this game even, 4 to 4. Sodbusters have been out hit 7 to 3. And here's a pop up. Foul territory is their room. It's pretty spacious here at Ryder Park. And right over near the fence, the catch is made. Luke Solis able to work the fence here at Ryder Park for the second out of the inning. Two up, two down for the top of the order. Well, and as I said, there's no fence to the to the dugout, so you don't have to worry about falling down, you know, any in steps or anything like that. But still with a fence there, it's a tough catch. And not being familiar, that's a great catch. And so back to the top of the order to Benito Garcia for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Coming into today, 23 and 21, but off to a great start in the second half. They're just a game behind Fremont in the Clark Division, Western Nebraska right there as well. And Spearfish is over 502 in the second half standings. It's Fremont 10 and 3 coming into today. Sioux Falls 9 and 4. Pitch misses, one ball and no strikes on Benito Garcia with two outs, nobody on for Sioux Falls. Top of the sixth, 4-4 four, four the score here at Ryder Park in Grand Island. The lone game this year at Ryder, trying to do it two or three times a season in future years. The pitch is fouled away, one ball and one strike on Garcia. Garcia, Arizona Western Junior College is where he plays his ball. A lot of Division I guys, though, on this 
Sioux Falls team. Their first year in existence, their owners, Commissioner Steve Wagner, playing their home games at Karras Park, home of Augustana University. Pitches outside for a ball, now two and one the count on Garcia with Stroh waiting on deck, and you'd like to get through Garcia. Stroh has a home run to his credit. They're two and three hitters, each have solo home runs, and I guess that's the good news. They are solo home runs. As the pitch coming in, off speeder Ooh. right there for a strike. It's now two balls and two strikes on Benito Garcia. Nice curveball there from Matt Hallback. Five guys on Sioux Falls team goes to August Nana School. So home field advantage for them, or home field used to, I guess. And what, and, and what a great opportunity to, to stay at home sure. and, uh, and play summer ball. It swung on and foul tipped into the glove of J.T. Cafferty. Two strikeouts in the inning, three up, three down for Sioux Falls here in the top of the sixth. We head to the bottom of the inning. It's Sioux Falls for Hastings for, and this is Sodbuster Baseball. Have you heard the... Five Points Bank has been proudly serving the Tri-City area for decades, and we are continuously finding ways to make your banking experience easy and enjoyable. We offer the best of both worlds with kind and 25. welcoming employees in the bank, while creating a strong online presence to accommodate Double your Leo. busy lifestyle. Where's Our innovative technology adds layers of security while being easily accessible to all age groups. Stop into the Better Bank to learn more today. Have you heard the latest in Sodbusters news? Hey, this is Josh Salmon, voice of Hastings Sodbusters Baseball, inviting you to check out the Sodcast, the official Sodbusters podcast. Each episode gets you up to date on team info, the latest news, player and coaches interviews and more join brian frew and myself for the sodcast all through the baseball season the sodcast is available for listening on spotify for free hastings sodbusters baseball insides inside duncan field with me josh salmon and co-owner brian frew the sodcast listen today head of the bottom half of inning number six who falls with their fourth pitcher of the day as we get a chance to uh, take a look at the numbers of nick Cavalia, Nick Cavalia, the new pitcher for Sioux Falls. And Cavalia making his eighth appearance in 12 innings so far. He has allowed 17 hits, 23 runs. He's walked 23 in 12 innings of work. And man, oh man, that is not a recipe for success here at Ryder Park. So we'll uh, see if uh, the Sodbusters are very patient. He has struck out 10, his record 0-1, but his ERA 17.25 coming into today. So the Sodbusters hopefully can uh, get some runs here. A 4-4 ties. The Sodbusters going to be uh, batting 8-9-1 and one against Cavalia, who would be the pitcher of record for... This Sioux Falls team, as we're in a tie ball game, so Lee goes after the first pitch and fouls it away. No balls, one strike. So Lee is 0 for 2 on the day. Uh, ground out to the third baseman and a pop up to the first baseman. That's Cavalier. a lot of miles he's given up with all those walks. Wow. Cavalier, left handed pitcher, brings it high for ball one, one ball, and one strike on Luke Solis. So Lise has been a nice addition to this sodbuster roster, very nifty middle infielder out of UC San Diego, the UC San Diego recruit. And pitch misses for ball two, two and one the count on Solis. Playing third base tonight, mix it up over there, lots of positions he can play. We've seen him primarily at short, but he's also played second base and takes the pitch here, two and two on Solis. Cavalia goes to the University of Maine. Pitch just misses three balls and two strikes, and that was a uh, theme against Casper. They have a few players from that Division I program. A lot of main players in this expedition league. Big swing, no contact, a strikeout for Cavalia, and Luke Solis goes down. He is 0 for 3 on the day. Brings up Carson Cahoy. Carson hasn't uh, had two very comfortable bats at all today here from the hometown crowd, so hopefully he gets something going here. Third time the charm here for Carson Cahoy, batting in the number nine spot, grounded to the third baseman on a check swing his first time up and struck out his second time up. Now sees Nick Cavalier, the left-hander, for the first time, and his pitch is high for ball one, one ball and no strikes. Sodbusters doing damage early, three in the first, one in the second. Nothing since. They have only three hits on the day. Sioux Falls battling back. They've out hit Sodbusters 7-3 as this pitch is skied foul over into the trees on the right side. 
Count goes to one ball and one strike. Very scenic here at Ryder Park uh, with uh, trees uh, behind and around and even beyond the outfield in right field. This guy sitting on his porch out there in right field in the house watching the game. 1-1 one, one delivery, and this one is lofted high in the air. Center field carrying pretty well, but going back and making the play just in front of the warning track will be Gannon Thompson for the second out of the inning. So two up, two down to the Sodbusters here in the sixth, and back to the top of the order for Logan Johnstone for the Hastings Sodbusters. Yeah, it's fun with the houses back there and people walking. There's a kid's play set in center field. Just a, It's just a city park with a with a ball field around it, and there's some you know, little league games going on to our right, so it's a fun atmosphere here tonight. Yeah, Ryder Park, there's softball fields behind us. They used to be some of the primary softball fields in Grand Island before they built the, the new veterans complex north of town. Big swing, no contact for Johnstone. No balls and one strike on Logan, who had a hit to open the game, came in to score the first run. He's gone over two cents with a fly out to left and a ground out to the shortstop. Lefty-lefty matchup. Cavalier brings it and puts it wide of the zone for ball one. One ball, one strike, trying to work a one, two, three inning. And like everyone in this league, I mean, his ERA is inflated. You have a couple of bad outings, and it may not really indicate the quality of pitcher you are because all of these guys are college pitchers. So, I mean, they are in college for a reason, and every team's got dudes, regardless of their record. Uh, there, there are uh, guys who, who play college at a variety of levels in this expedition league, and it's really fun to see them all come together and compete here in the summer months. Pitch is over for a strike, two and two the count now on Logan Johnstone. You know, after this weekend, Steve, there's only six home games left. It's, a lot, it's, it's a lot of road trips coming yeah. up for the Hastings Sodbusters. He's and winding down. Yep, well, I was going to say, we are uh, in the home stretch, if you will, as the pitch misses for ball three, three and two the count on Logan Johnstone. What will I do with my nights now? Get ready for the fall, man. Pick up cribbage or something. You are going to be um, you're going to be taking a lot of pitch pictures of uh, football, softball, golf, will volleyball be. here, fall time. Bouncing ball foul. It remains three balls and two strikes on Logan Johnstone as we'll shift gears into high school season. I'll have a chance to do some play-by-play. -play. You'll be doing some photography work for the Grand Island Independent. I'm trying not to get tackled this year. Remember, I got tackled last year, first game of the year. 3-2 pitch is grounded to the right side. Second baseman's got it. That's Brandon and the Sodbusters very quiet here in the sixth inning. No runs on no hits. We head to the seventh. It remains Sioux Falls 4, Hastings 4. This is Sodbuster baseball. And we're now from the Nebraska Lottery. Nope, we are going to do five points bank here. Sorry, Nate's got a jillion balls in the air here. Five Points Bank has been proudly serving the Tri-City area for decades, and we are continuously finding ways to make your banking experience easy and enjoyable. We offer the best of both worlds with kind and welcoming employees in the bank while creating a strong online presence to accommodate your busy lifestyle. Our innovative technology adds layers of security while being easily accessible to all age groups. Stop into the Better Bank to learn more today. Have you heard the latest in Sodbusters news? Hey, this is Josh Salmon, voice of Hastings Sodbusters Baseball, inviting you to check out the Sodcast, the official Sodbusters podcast. Each episode gets you up to date on team info, the latest news, player and coaches interviews, and more. Join Brian Frew and myself for the Sodcast all through the baseball season. The Sodcast is available for listening on Spotify for free. Hastings Sodbusters Baseball Insides, Inside Duncan Field, with me, Josh Salmon, and co-owner Brian Frew. The Sodcast, listen today. This is Sodbuster Baseball 4-4 as we head to the seventh inning. It's going to be the two, three, and four hitters coming up for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Matt Hall back out for his third inning of work. He's allowed a run on two hits. Allowed a home run of the first man he uh, faced, but has really settled in nicely. Had allowed an infield single, and since that, he has retired five in a row, and Hallback has also struck out three uh, during his outing here for the Hastings Sodbusters. Hasn't walked a man, and that's one key stat for this Hastings team today. Can they stay away from the free passes? Well, so far, they have walked only one as a staff. Uh, you saw Sioux Falls have five walks, all of those from Dane Frazier. Their three relievers have not walked anyone and really have, uh, have turned the game in their favor, if you will. It's 4-4 four, four times. Sodbusters have not put up much of a threat against Mix, McClure, and Cavalina. Here is Mitch Stroh. Stroh had a solo home run back in the third off starting pitcher Trevor Dubray. 
He had a sacrifice bunt his first time up, also grounded back to the pitcher, and he will get his first look at Matt Holbeck. And the curveball just misses for ball one. One ball and no strikes as we see George Tyree calling the balls and strikes tonight. Anthony Atkinson works the field, the two-man crew, which is traditional here in the Expedition League. 1-0 pitch from Hallback. Misses for ball two, 2-0 the count on Mitch Stroh batting in the two spot for Sioux Falls. Casper leading four to three over Fremont right now, but only in the third inning. Source Valley up seven to nothing at Badland Big Sticks. Again, Casper comes back to Hastings tomorrow as the pitch is fouled away. Two balls at a strike on Mitch Stroh. 635 Friday, Saturday, and Sunday back at Duncan Field. This is a one-game set here at Ryder Park, and it's it's kind of nice for Sioux Falls. They're 30 miles closer as they get set to uh, to hit the road. Yeah, nice little road trip for them. And uh, looking at another score here, Spearfish Sasquatch leading three to nothing at Mining City. The other expansion team, uh, one of the other expansion teams this year, they're in the top of the second. 12 teams this year. We know there's going to be at least one more team with uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota adding. It'll be interesting to see if there are any other expansion teams. There's See teams come and go a little bit. Two and one the count as the pitch comes in. Swing and a foul ball. It goes to two balls and two strikes on Mitch Stroh. I really think they should call them the Grand Forks Spoons. For, yeah, that would that be. That would be, see? It would see be. See what I did there? Brian Frew laughed at that. I was, Thanks. Uh, I think yeah, that's, I did not, but Brian did. So that's, and again, he's, j he's like co-owner. So you, you've impressed right. one of those guys. So well, At least I didn't insult the back of his head. 2-2 pitch. <laughs> it's taken high for ball three. Yeah, again, I'm down in front of the other co-owner, me earlier. I'm glad you said it because I was going to. And it could be my last broadcast here. And Scott also gave me a hard time about talking about last night's game. It's that we still have to talk about the past. You right, know. and they're towing your car right now too. So. Yep. Pitch is fouled away as we continue 3-2. Mitch Stroh, pretty good battle here. It'll be the seventh pitch of the at-bat for... Hallback, so he's trying to work around the first man he faces here in inning number seven. Sodbusters trying to get back on the winning track here at Ryder Park, and we'll be back at Duncan Field Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 3 2 pitches grounded to the left side and into left field for a base hit, so Lee went to his left but could not get to it. Single for Stroh to open things up here in the seventh. Could have bat there for Stroh and then just hit it to Solis, and he just couldn't quite. He put his glove on it, but he didn't get his glove down far enough and went right underneath. Ian Riley had to back up and threw the ball in, keeping Stroh to a single. Jonathan Brandon up there now. Brandon has one of the two home runs in the game, a solo shot to open the fifth inning that knotted this game at four. Lead run on there here in the seventh inning for the Sioux Falls Storm as Brandon one for three on the day. Moderate lead, now another step taken as the pitch misses for ball one. One ball and no strikes. These Sioux Falls Sunfish... A very run-happy team with over 160 stolen bases now. And Mitch Stroh, he has five for the season coming into today. Right-handed pitcher, Hallback. Hallback breaks contact as Stroh had started to take a couple of steps towards second and comes back into first base. He's got a good move, Matt does. We saw that earlier. So Stroh can't get too fancy over there at first base. We'll see what Hallback can get done. He'll bring the pitch home here, and it's low and in the dirt. Runner goes, and no throw. Nice read on the dirt ball from Mitch Stroh. He is into second base. Officially a wild pitch for him as Brandon is ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. So big moment in the game. We're getting late, 4-4. Sodbusters trying to keep it a tie game, but the lead run at second with nobody out. And the three, four, and five hitters up there for Sioux Falls here in inning number seven. All back out of the stretch. Brings the pitch home. Misses for ball three, and it's now 3-0 and oh on Brandon. Brandon played third base in last night's game. Made a couple uh, bad throws over there. Having a tough night at the office, the corner. Playing second base today with Stroh playing third. Benito Garcia shortstop today, and it's a four-pitch walk to Brandon. And so he's aboard. First and second, nobody out with their four, five, and six hitters coming up. Will Olson, Sodbusters would love to find a way to get a double play here today. So Will Olson steps to the plate, one of the top hitters on the team. 
347 coming into today, second on the squad. Leads the team in runs scored, leads the team in home runs and RBIs. Sidebuster's going to make a visit to the mound here with Luke Bay, the Kansas State graduate assistant, coming out to visit with Holback. Sidebusters and the Sunfish wrapping up a brief two-game series before Casper makes a return to Central Nebraska. Games in Hastings Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Look at the Clark Division here. Some of the leaders, uh, as we uh, talked about, Trevor Matson is on the uh, top five for RBIs with 32 in the league. Uh, take the back, he's number six. Uh, Austin Callahan leading for the Moo. Uh, and you look at the pitchers, Sunfish have Garcia. Boy, he leads in, in uh, uh, he has five wins. He also leads in strikeouts, or he's on, the, on for strikeouts. He's in fourth place, and his ERA is 248. He's starting their shortstop tonight. So good pitcher for Garcia. I'm glad we didn't have to face him tonight. Maybe at the next series at their house, we probably will. As the conversation is over, let's see what the Sodbusters can get done. Hallback stays in there. First and second, nobody out. Sioux Falls trying to grab the lead for the second time today. They took a 1-0 lead in the first. Sodbusters grabbed it back with three in the bottom of the inning. Led 4-1 to one at one point, but now it's a 4-4 tie. As the pitch comes home, outside for ball one. One ball and no strikes on Olsen. A guy that you do not want to see up there with an RBI chance. He already has an RBI today and a double in his column. Olsen, solid player out of Augustana. He's one of their Expedition League All-Stars. And he rifles this one to right center field, carrying well and looking up. And this one is going to be gone as Carson Cahoy back to give it a look. But a three-run blast for Will Olson. So their two, three, and four hitters all have home runs today. And Sioux Falls has erased an early four-to-one deficit. And now they have the lead at seven-to-four. Yeah, well, the, giving up the single and then obviously walks hurt you and it would have been only been a two-run homer, but still, you know, if you lose by one, you come back and you look at that and say, okay, what if? But still, three home runs and just uh, just took the pitch and put it in a bad place. Now Kenneth Dutka steps to the plate. <clears throat> Dutka one for three, an infield single and a couple of stolen bases his last time up, but the Snodbusters are going to make a pitching change, so we will take a break and tell you about the new Hastings pitcher when we come back. It is seven to four, Sodbusters trail it as you're listening to and watching Sodbuster Baseball. Imagine Sorry. visiting a place with historic housing districts, beautiful parks, and strolling through downtown shops. No, it isn't a fairy tale. It's Hastings, Nebraska. The Adams County Visitors Bureau invites you to experience Hastings, from bird watching to the Aqua Court Water Park to taking in a Sodbusters baseball game at a historic Duncan Field. It all starts with the Adams County Visitors Bureau. What would a visit be without great eats? Hastings has plenty for all cravings. Start exploring at visithastingsnebraska.com. Experience Hastings with the Adams County Visitors Bureau. Nebraska Land Distributing is a proud sponsor of the Hastings Sodbusters. When you come to the ballpark, get a refreshing Coors Light, courtesy of Nebraska Land Distributing. Nebraska Land Distributing also features Line and Kugels, the ultimate summer drink, cold and refreshing, and sold at Duncan Field. Another Nebraska Land Distributing option when you come to the ballpark is Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Nebraska Land Distributing, proud sponsor of the Beer Batter at all Hastings Sodbuster home games. Another of the relative newcomers making an appearance for the Sodbusters, as we've seen Dubray, Holback, and now James Shimashita making his sixth appearance already in nine innings. He's allowed three runs on four hits. He has walked nine, struck out 12. Doesn't have a record at a pretty good relief appearance that uh, could have ended up in a win, but the Sodbusters couldn't quite finish the deal a few games back. Shimashita, though, has been solid out of the pen for this Hastings Sodbuster team with an ERA of 3.00. He will try to keep it at 7-4 to four as the Sodbusters have seen an early 4-1 lead slip away. And Matt Hallback, who had two solid innings of relief, struggles here, allowing that single. And really the key at bat this inning, Mitch Stroh, who battled and clawed until he finally was able to uh, work a single, then a four-pitch walk, and then you just left one too good for Will Olson, who drilled a three-run home run, and that's the danger here at Ryder Park. That at Duncan Field, you would have had first and second one out on a fly ball out to right, probably, but as it stands, 
now 7-4 to four with uh, Sioux Falls on top, and they still have nobody out with their 5, 6, and 7 hitters coming up. Yeah, Scott thought it would be some dingers, but we'd hope it would be some sodbuster dingers. Nobody really have gotten that close yet tonight for Hastings, but there's time yet. First guy to get out of the inning. As this Sioux Falls team has hit 23 home runs coming into today compared to nine for Hastings. Pitch taken high for a ball, one ball and no strikes on Kenneth Dutko, who was the winning pitcher yesterday, and now one for three today in the field as he has been able to work a solid center field spot. Fouls this pitch away, one ball and one strike on Kenneth Dutka. Shimashita out there, left-handed pitcher. James sets and delivers and pitch fouled away again. One ball and two strikes. Really neat to hear Scott Galusha talk about all the guys are going to invite back and you would think you're, you're a team that's some 20 games below 500, but it's such a young group. A lot of guys just, uh, you know, their first year of college or maybe college recruits, and, and they like the character of these guys and feel like, you know, another year of college next summer could be a lot better. Pitch fouled away. Remains one and two on Kenneth Dutka. Yeah, they make a relationship with the host families, too. A lot of these guys yep. uh, love the host families they play at, and that makes a big decision, too. They have a place to stay next year. One ball and two strikes, nobody out. Three runs home for Sioux Falls. They've totally turned the game around, racing a three-run deficit to lead by three and a looping liner to set to a left field for a base hit. Sioux Falls has done a nice job at the play. I mean, they've hit balls hard, but they've also uh, gone with pitches today, and there's another just solid single as Dutka just took it the other way uh, for a uh, hit, and Sioux Falls has had their first four reach here in the seventh inning. That was the first batter up against Shimashita as we see Gannon Thompson. Three hits in the inning for Sioux Falls. That's the second of the game for Dutko, came in batting 307. Thompson 0 for two on the day. He has walked and scored a run as he swings at the first pitch and fouls it back. No balls, one strike on Gannon Thompson. Even They're all stars, if you will, the Sioux Falls Going to be sending four to Casper for the All-Star game. Alex, uh, excuse me, Adonix Forte, who played yesterday as the pitch is on the outside corner for strike two. Mitch Stone to go along with Andrew Garcia and Will Olson, who looked like an All-Star with his three-run home run earlier this inning. 0-2 pitch on the way. Swing and a foul tip into the glove of J.T. Cafferty for a strikeout for James Shimashita. I think James put a little extra mustard on that one, bringing the heat. So one on, one out for Jesus Lecone. Lecone is 0 for 2 with a walk and a stolen base on the day. Jesus Lecone out of York College, so playing in Sioux Falls, but uh, probably knows Manny Herrera pretty well. It's Lee Cohn. Cleaned out Pizza Ranch we hear <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Hometown of El Paso, they have several guys from that community on this Sioux Falls team. 1-0 delivery on the way. This pitch is missing for a ball. Count goes to two balls and no strikes on Jesus Lee Cohn. That's a neat thing about you know baseball and, and sports in general. You, you come from one community, you go to another, and then summer you, you go to a different place, you get a chance to know different guys. It's just a, it's a neat fraternity. And as Scott Galusha mentioned, you know, some of these guys, you, you're gonna you're gonna be with them every day and may never really see them again in your life. Right. So you, but they, these relationships will last a lifetime. 3-0 pitch on the way, and it's a four pitch walk for Lee Cohn. So first and second now, and one out for Carter Tibbetts. Yeah, and it's you know, a good way to spend your summer. I mean, who wants to get a job? You can play That's baseball. Right. Yep, right? you got the opportunity. And plus, you know, a lot of these guys, particularly the junior college kids, they're still looking for that next opportunity. Maybe you can some tur turn some heads. I know I had a chance to visit with Rand Sanders earlier today. Now, he didn't get a chance this summer because he had an arm injury, uh, but he's hoping to get ready to go for his second year at Cloud County Community College, still trying to find a place to go for uh, for a four-year experience. Well, J.T. Cafferty moving on to Arkansas Tech. So. Yep, from Western Nebraska, one and done at, at Western Nebraska Community College, now going to be an Arkansas Tech wonder boy. So now we see Carter Tibbetts step to the plate, and the pitch is inside for a ball, one ball and no strikes. And Tibbetts has had a good day, a couple of singles. He also has struck out. It got away from Matt Hall back here in the seventh inning. A single, a walk, and a three-run home run. And now James Shimashita now trying to 
come in and get out of this with no further damage, but he is allowed a single and a walk to go along with a strikeout. Misses on the 1-0 pitch, 2-0 the count on Carter Tibbetts. Sioux Falls on top, 7-4. To they now have out hit Hastings 10-3. to three. Sodbusters have really been shackled by the bullpen of Sioux Falls. Yeah, they were just starting to get used to the starter, then they put Mix in and McClure and then Cavalier, and they just uh, can't get some hits off these guys. Pitch called strike one, two and one. The count now on Carter Tibbetts, the number eight hitter. You'd like to get through the eight and nine without having to turn the order over here against the Storm and keep it a three-run game. Three runs, not a whole lot here at Ryder Park. Sodbuster certainly would have a chance to come back if they could find a way. Here's the pitch. Foul tipped into the glove of Cafferty, and two and two, the count on Carter Tibbetts. Shimashita, one of the lefties, is, you've got Horton, you've got him, and you've got uh, uh, Ryan uh, Melvin, who's a Grand Island native, as your, start, as your lefty pitchers. 2-2 two, two pitch on the way. Wow, just misses. Sodbuster fans not too pleased with that ball call from home plate umpire George Tyree, and it's 3-2 and two with runners at first and second and only one man out. Now George can hear it a little better here, <laughs> a little shorter venue, a little closer to the fans. <laughs> and Shimashita set to bring home the 3-2 pitch, and this one is rifled into left field for a base hit. Sioux Falls will score a run from second base, and they'll have runners at first and second. Four have come home in the inning, so after the Sodbusters thought they had strike three, one pitch later, Carter Tibbetts has a single that brings home a run as Kenneth Dutka scores, and Jesus Lee Cohn ends up at second base. Yeah, that's just one of those things. I mean, James probably was mad about the strike call and not getting it, and maybe just didn't focus right on that pitch and just put it in the wrong spot. Clan Beers steps up now. He had a sacrifice fly back in the third. He has also flown out to center and popped to third on a fine play from Luke Solis in foul territory. Pitch on the outside corner for strike one. No balls, one strike. Eighth man to bat in the inning. Sioux Falls has four on the board so far, and there's still only one man out. You ever heard of another person named D. Clan? No. The Clan? No. Oh, no, nope, I haven't either. Declan, sorry. Either way, I still haven't. And I, have, have we got the official word that it is Declan? Declan, I, okay. I, 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 I don't know if we've actually got that. As the, I was too worried about his last name being Beers. I've never officially got his official first name pronunciation. You actually talk to the radio guy. Is it is it Declan? Uh, let me find out what I have written down here. Because <laughs> we went with Declan on the PA side, but you actually talked to their uh, their yeah. radio guy. So I don't remember, but yeah, I, okay. I didn't ch uh, change anything on the roster, mm -hmm. so they make an abbreviation mark or anything. I think Declan sounds cooler, so we're going to call him Declan yeah. for the rest of this game anyway. Pitches across for a strike. Last two pitches, you saw Lee Cohn take third, and now Tibbetts has taken second. There's still only one man out. Beers down to the count, one and two, so a strikeout would look pretty big here, one and two, to try to keep that runner at third with less than two outs. As Tibbetts steals, I have eight stolen bases for Sioux Falls. They have been a good running team throughout the course of this year. 1-2 delivery. Off-speeders grounded to the right side. Runners stay. The throw will be in time. And Sioux Falls nearly got men hung off the bases as you saw Lee Cohn stay at third. Tibbetts thought he was going to go. Uh, Beers was thrown out. Sodbusters fortunate to keep those runners at second and third because I think Lee Cohn probably could have scored if he would have taken off on that slow roller. And top of the order, Benito Garcia up there now with four runs home on the inning. Ninth man to bat for the Sioux Falls Sunfish as they own a lead of eight to four. Yeah, it's a seventh inning. Guy's been up his fifth time already. Yeah. 11 hits now in the game for Sioux Falls as this pitch hit high in the air, right field. Carson Cahoy over a few steps, makes the play to end the seventh inning. But four runs come across, and Sioux Falls has taken over, leading it 8-4. to four. This is Sodbuster Baseball. I'm a working mom. I don't have a lot of time for grocery shopping. That's why Sam's Club is so convenient. I can get the food my family loves, household supplies, and be on my way. My husband likes that they offer oil changes and tire services. Really saves him time. They have early hours for Plus Club members so I can beat the crowd on the weekend. Plus, Sam's Club offers free curbside pickup. Order online or in the app. Sam's Club, Grand Island. Sam's Club, a proud partner of Sodbuster Baseball. 
For the best in promotional videos, custom designs, photography, websites, and more, it's Provident Promotions. You've got the business. Now make it stand out with Provident Promotions. Provident Promotions can help you design your logo, website, custom make your promotional video, and shoot just the right photo for your company or business needs to be seen everywhere. And they even offer email marketing services and social media management. Let them help you from start to finish. 111 North Burlington Avenue, Suite 110 in Hastings. A proud sponsor of Sodbuster Baseball. At the bottom half of inning number seven, Sodbusters with work to do now after that four spot for Sioux Falls at the top of the seven. We'll see if they can come right back. This is a big half inning for Hastings as they bat their two, three, and four hitters. If it doesn't go well, these guys may not uh, get another chance. So really want to get something going right here, plus kind of uh, make a statement that you can come back. So this is a pretty big half inning as they try to find the measure of Nick Cavallina. Cavalia had uh, struggled through the course of the year, but uh, he was able to mow him down one, two, three in his relief inning in the sixth. Yeah, and they're just happy to have the same guy out there for a second inning. They've used a lot of pitchers here today by committee, and they were just starting to get used to, to Frazier when he got pulled out, and then just since then the Busters haven't have been in sync batting and can't get much going. Frazier goes the first two innings, allows four runs on three hits. The three relievers have combined to allow zero hits. JT Mix for two innings. Norris McClure for an inning, and Nick Cavalia uh, with uh, one solid inning of work. He'll face Cole Dawson. Dawson has been aboard twice. He is 0 for 1 with two runs scored. So 11 to 3 in the hits, 8 to 4 is the score. Who falls on top of the Hastings Sodbusters? Cavalia winds and delivers and misses for ball one. One ball and no strikes on Cole Dawson. Sodbusters need runners. Uh, Dawson, who has a pretty good eye anyway, is probably going to be pretty conservative right here. You may see him take a, another pitch or two, and he certainly will if Cavalier is no closer than that, as his catcher had to come out of his stance and make a backhanded stop, Carter Tibbetts. 2-0 oh the count now on right-handed hitting Cole Dawson, one of the Expedition League All-Stars. Takes strike one, 2-1 and one the count on Dawson. Dawson and Matson both going to purr. He... Graduated from Arcadia University and will still have two years of eligibility at Gardner-Webb as he works on his master's in business administration. Swings and foul tips it here. Two and two the count on Trevor Matson. Steve Stein, Josh Salmon, Nate Miller. Got Brian Frew in the press box today. Scott Galusha has been all over the place doing a variety of things as he does. And the pitch in the dirt, and it gets a pretty good piece of the catcher here, Carter Tibbetts. So the home plate umpire going to deliver a ball personally to the pitcher Cavalier to allow Tibbetts a few extra moments. Three and two the count now on Trevor Matson. One out, nobody on. Seventh inning, Sodbusters on the short end of an 8-4 score. Eight runs, 11 hits for the Sunfish. Four runs, three hits for the Sodbusters. The only error of the game. Ironically enough, happened on the first at bat of the game. Benito Garcia scoring an unearned run after he reached on an error. And uh, been clean ball since then. Matson gets a piece of this one and stays alive as Matson are pretty good at bat going here. It'll be the seventh pitch of the at bat for, for Trevor Matson. Matson's hometown, Riverside, California. As Cavalier. Brings home the pitch. It's down low for a ball. Cavalier has really struggled with walks for the season. Now he's been around the zone since he's had his relief appearance today. It's the first walk after he had set down the first four sodbusters he'd faced. Seven walks sodbusters have drawn today in the game, most of those coming early against the starter, Frazier. Frazier had five of those seven walks. As Cavalier spot, Sodbusters have been turned away as Jonathan Brandon to Benito Garcia to Jesus Lee Cohn to end the inning on the double play. Sodbusters, no runs, no hits, nobody left. And we head to the eighth inning. Josh Salmon going to take you through the remainder of the game. It is eight to four, Sioux Falls, and this is Sodbuster Baseball. Time out, time out. Smith, we only need one more out. Do you think you have enough energy? <laughs> I'm exhausted and it's hot out here. I'm thinking about enjoying that nice, cool air conditioning I have at home. 
Oh, yeah, you've talked about Rudd's Heating and AC, the number one source for residential and commercial HVAC services in Nebraska for over 45 years. Yeah, yeah, now, I have enough for one more batter, Coach. Smith, go finish this thing so we can all go home and cool off. Visit RuttsHeatingAndAir.com. My husband and I love to live in Nebraska. It's the good life. We always vacation here. Love those Nebraska state parks. We love to eat here. Where are you going to get a better steak? And we love to play here, especially Nebraska Pick 5 from the Nebraska Lottery. It has a $50,000 starting jackpot, drawing seven days a week, and all the proceeds go back to our state. Hey, honey, this weekend, let's buy some Nebraska Pick 5 tickets, go to a state park, and grill some steaks. Like our first date. <laughs> I'm no amateur. Top prize odds, one in 501,000. James Shimashita back out there for the Busters here in the second inning of work. And got some work to do to try to stop Sioux Falls. They're leading 8-4 to four here in the top of the eighth. Ryder Park in Grand Island, Nebraska. I'm Josh Salmon, Steve Stein you heard from. Nate Miller to my left. Brian Frew up here in the box as well. We've had Scott Galusha around. And fun atmosphere, kind of old home week for a lot of us here with uh, a lot of history at this field. And... I see some people they haven't seen in a while and that kind of thing. I saw somebody I knew that said she was going to come to the game and brought her kids, and she did. So that was kind of cool, so I went to high school with. Sioux Falls, eight runs, 11 hits, and no errors. Hastings have four runs, three hits, and one error. This is one of those press boxes where everybody's sitting next to each other. There's a lot of Legion ones that way, and that's the way Hastings used to be a long time ago at Duncan Field. And now they have the best press boxes I've ever been in. This one isn't bad. I love the bathroom behind me, by the way. It's four... Four feet away. It's uh, it's very nice. As a broadcaster, when when you don't have a uh, a color guy to help you out, and the, the games get pretty long, and your and your bladder thanks you for a close bathroom. We'll leave it at that. So Smith Stroh will lead things off again. This is the third time he's let off an inning this game. And first pitch in there, strike from James Shimashita. Stroh had a homer back in the third, singled in the seventh. He's grounded out and had a sacrifice bunt. Officially two of three. Shimashita getting the sign from Cafferty. Still defensive change, no defensive changes at all. Still got Solis from third to first. Solis, Dawson, Lombardi, and Matson. Left field to right is Riley Johnston, uh, Johnstone and Cahoy with Cafferty behind the plate. And James Shimashita with a 1-0 count against Mitch Stroh. That one inside is one ball and one strike. Buster's able to put four runs up early. Things were looking really good, and then they pulled the starter and just haven't been able to do anything against the bullpen. Swung on and missed there, and it's ball and two strikes to Mitch Stroh, who's mad at himself on that one. Sioux Falls Sunfish, an expansion team. They were supposed to play last season and held off for COVID. We got a couple of their players came to the Hastings last year. So we're going to miss. Got him striking out. Mitch Stroh have a seat. One down. So for Shimashita, that's his first strikeout. And four strikeouts thrown by Sawbuster pitching today. Brings up Jonathan Brandon, the second baseman. Second strikeout. You're right. Thank you, Nate. Thompson was the first one. I had it written down right. I just said it wrong. I'm doing old school scoring here without the internet. That one inside. We have very limited internet, just enough to uh, to broadcast on the hotspot on Scott's phone here from Legion Park. They don't have internet, so Andy Chase can have his work cut out for him later, putting everything in manually. One ball, no strikes, and that one hit to right field. Cahoy makes a diving. No, it comes out of his glove. I thought he was going to come up with that one. Carson went diving for it, and as he fell down, the ball fell out of his glove. So, Two on here, or excuse me, a runner on here for Sioux Falls, and a third hit, uh, second hit for Brandon. Got a lot of markings here on my paper. One on, one out, 8-4, Sioux Falls leads. Will Olson. Brandon leads off at first. Matson holding them on. They've been stealing a lot of bases. So we'll see if he goes at some point in this sequence. That one in there for a strike. Shimashita, third pitcher of the day. Trevor Dubray started. And Matt Hallback 
and James Shimashita. The 0 1 coming up here to Matt, uh, Will Olson. Going in the dirt, Cafferty. Bobbles it a little bit. And one ball, one strike, one out. I didn't give him a stolen base on that because he didn't take off until the catcher bobbled it. One error for Hastings in the game. That was early in the game. Shimashita with a 1 1 count here against the cleanup hitter, Will Olson. Inside, fastball misses. Two balls and a strike. Make sure you're always checking out the, the Twitter page. Our social media guru, Jack, is the man. Jack does a good job. He's got some pictures he's working on to my right right now. Here's the one and two. That's going to be a two and one. And one out, runner standing on second. 8-4, Sioux Falls with the lead here in the top of the eighth. And that one inside again, almost the exact same pitch. Brandon stands at second base. He singled, went to first in a wild pitch. And 12 hits in the game for Sioux Falls. Three home runs, two solo shots, and a three-run job. Here is the 3-1 from James Shimashita. Lefty comes set, and strike two. Full count to Will Olson. Outfield playing deep here in a very sh shallow Legion ballpark at Ryder Park. Lights on, obviously. And hush over the crowd, and that one is a walk outside and high. So taking first base will be Olson. He had the three-run homer earlier in the game, back in the seventh inning. So that was the 3-2 pitch as well. So brings up Kenneth Dutka. Dutka two of four today. Fly out, ground out, and two singles. Two runners on here for Sioux Falls in the eighth. One out. Lefty versus lefty here. Shimashita versus Dutka. James comes set and the pitch. That one smacked into center field. John Stone catches it on the run. Nice play there. That ball was sinking fast, and he catches it about left center field. And there's an out and two outs. Guy's not used to the lights here and the field. It could be a tough play this time of night, but it's a good play out there. Gannon Thompson comes up. He's the right fielder. He's struck out twice, flew out once, walked once. Kept him off the base pass pretty good tonight. He had a big night last night. He was kind of all over the place last night. Saw him a bunch. Two outs. Shimashita would like to get out of the inning and leave the two guys on base. Swung on and missed on that one. I got seven batters left on base for Sioux Falls. And one and one here. So we got standing on second base is Brandon Olson on first. Brandon walked. Brandon Singles also walked. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Shimashita. Swung on a miss on the off speed. Pulled the string on him there. And goes to 1-2. and two. Could really use a strike out here for James Shimashita. He's got two in the game. Perfect time for his third one to leave him on. Buster's coming up in the eighth inning. We'll have Cafferty, Riley, and Lombardi do up. 5-6-7. Six outs left for them. Stepping out of the box is Thompson. Wants a practice swing. Crowd getting into it here a little bit. Eighth inning, eight to four. Sioux Falls from Ryder Park in Grand Island, Nebraska. Josh Salmon, Steve Stein, Nate Miller, Brian Frew, and Scott Galusha. James comes set now on the rubber. Lefty versus righty. Here is the one and two, and just misses on that one. So you had Stroh let off the inning. He struck out. Brandon singled. He stands on second base. Will Olson 
Walks, he stands on first. Kenneth Dudka flew out to center a moment ago. And Brandon's single out there was one that Kohoy dropped. So hopefully that doesn't come back to bite him. Here is the 2-2. Two -two. That one hit deep to center. Logan Johnstone on his horse, and it bounces on the warning track. That'll score one. Here comes another one around third. The relay throw to home is going to be a good one, and they just don't get it. Wow, the throw is just a little late. It was a great throw on a relay, and just a tad late. Two more runs scored there on a long double by Thompson. Thought maybe they're going to have him there at the plate. So... Two RBIs there for Thompson. First hit of the day for him. Comes with two outs. And a 2-2 count to center. At least it didn't go out. Hit about the warning track, and Johnstone got it in quickly. Brings up Jesus. Right, that's peace of mind. Ram Tire and Hastings, West 2nd Street. Open 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. A proud sponsor of Sodbuster Baseball. Hey, you. Your ad here. It's Josh Salmon of Salmon Says Media. Imagine turning on the radio or TV and hearing or seeing your business being advertised. Salmon Says Media offers voiceovers, full audio production, on-hold messaging for your phone, and more. Nearly two decades of experience. Salmon Says Media also offers radio imaging and podcast production. See us on Facebook. Salmon Says Media, the official media partner of the Hastings Sodbusters. It is Josh Salmon of Salmon Says Media. And the pitching change coming up for Sioux Falls here. It's a right-hander. So we go to another pitcher for Sioux Falls, the Sunfish. And I am not finding. Oh, this is Cricket Danielson, so he's on. Here we go. Listed as an infielder, Cricket Darryl, Darryl Cricket Dylan Cricket Danielson, Oral Roberts University, from Marshall, Minnesota. So it's Cricket Danielson is the last name. The fifth pitcher of the day for Sioux Falls, and you usually when you have five pitchers, you're the team that's losing or struggling, and they're winning ten to four. Buster's put three up in the first. Looked really good, had one in the fourth, and just haven't really done much since. Three hits cut total in the entire game for Hastings. Ten runs on 14 hits for Sioux Falls, three home runs. Here at Ryder Park, it'll be J.T. Cafferty, Ian Riley, and Jack Lombardi. Floats upstairs, 3-2, J.T. lays off of it. Outfield pretty much straight away, and feel the same. And the pitch, swung on and missed. Got him and down goes JT's strikeout for Hastings, one down here in the eighth. There's only been one time the Busters have had the leadoff hitter on in the entire game, and that was Logan Johnstone in the first inning. And usually that trend tends to be not a good thing. Usually if your leadoff hitter gets on, things happen. I remember every time Casey Burnham got on in years past, usually good things happen, but... Brings up Ian Riley. He has struck out twice tonight. And why and outside, it goes to two and two. Cricket Danielson. It started off with Dane Frazier, then JT Mix, Norris McClure, uh, Nick Cavallina, and now Dylan Cricket Danielson. Five pitchers for Sioux Falls. One hammered right field side and into the grass. And there's some kids chasing after it. I hadn't seen any kids chasing a ball in a while. I think maybe they chase it and then they stay on the playground or something. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Cricket Danielson. Pitch on the way. Ian fouls that one off the third base side. Good job staying alive there for Ian, Dan for Ian Riley. Ian is primarily an outfielder, but we've used him a lot this year as first base. He's very fast, leads the team in stolen bases. A very versatile guy, kind of a quiet guy, didn't say a 